Oh, three kings in the house. <gasps> She's a three kings mom. Hi, mom. All right. Well, good luck to three kings. Good morning once again, ladies and gentlemen. Day number three of the Syndicate Crown about to get underway. Our first heat, your team competition, event number five. Getting underway here in just under 10 minutes at 9 a.m. Final chance for our teams to climb that leaderboard. Make sure to find your way to the stands. First of two heats of event five, followed by team event six, our final event of the weekend for our squads competing here at Syndicate Crown. Getting underway here, just about eight minutes time. We'll be right back with you shortly. Here at the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee, only two events remain, and when it's all said and done, we five will know minutes. the five men, five women, and five teams that are heading to Madison, Wisconsin, and the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for being with us, everybody, here at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. And, Tommy, on the men's side, we have a pretty clear picture developing, but on the women's side and on the team side, it's wide open. 
Yeah, and remember, on top of those games ticket spots, there's multiple ways to extend your season. Spots six through eight, get tickets to the last chance qualifier to maybe get another shot at a games ticket as well. So the bubble race extends all the way down the top ten. Here are the storylines that we are following on the third and final day of the competition. Cross and Mayhem has been perfect so far in the team competition, but it is very tight behind them. There's no doubt that Gabby McClellan is for real. She continues to lead heading into the final two events, and youth is being served over in the men's division. Everyone inside the top five is 24 or younger, but Tommy, let's start with the teams because they are up first. Cross and Mayhem Freedom trying to go six for six. No reason to think they can. And it's not just that they've won every event, but more so that it hasn't even been close. All four athletes could snatch ladder. They won workout three by a minute, workout four by nearly a minute. And right now, Reykjavik and Lowlands has gone five for five. So I think now there's a little pressure for Mayhem to do the same and actually be perfect the entire weekend. And then you mentioned Gabby McClellan. I mean, her power was on full display on day number one, a member of our U.S. Space Force. I was really impressed by her day two, actually. Coming in as the overall leader, keeping it between the buoys in the legless event, and another top 10 finish in the long grindy event showcases a broader capacity, and she deserves every point of that first place position overall. And then we saw the last uh, point there for the individual men. The kids are all right. I doubt Pete Townsend had James Sprague in mind when he wrote that song 60 years ago, but Sprague has really embodied that statement. After a 24th place finish, has been lights out. An event win on, on his 20th birthday, a second place finish to open up yesterday and he went toe to toe with the best in the sport uh, in that top heat and right now he has a games ticket. The schedule for Sunday will work a little differently than it has over the past two days. The teams are going to close out their day of competition first. They'll go back to back in teams events five and six. Then for the women, they will do event five, we'll do men event five, and then we'll do women's heat six, or sorry, women's event six heats one and two, men's event six meets one and two, and then the final heats for event six for the men and the women at the end of the day. It's going to be a great day here in Knoxville. Stay with us, everybody. Teams coming up next at the Syndicate Crown. Welcome inside the Knoxville Civic Coliseum, everyone. Glad you're with us today for the final day of competition here at the Syndicate Crown. Sean Woodland and Tommy Marquez here with you in the booth. Nikki Brazier's down on the competition floor. We have more equipment than we have ever had on the competition floor. A new rig and a whole bunch of rowers as we get set for team events number five presented by Go On. It is night at the Roxbury. It is a two-parter here. Get those heads bobbing, Sean, because there's a lot going on here. 20, uh, 30 and 24 calorie row, descending number of rowers, starting with all four. So each round, you will drop an athlete that has to row. If you're not rowing, you have to complete 20 synchro burpees over the worm, and then you go back for 20 worm squats. That's part A. In part B, you have four rounds of 20 synchro toes to bar, 10 worm hang power cleans, but your team will be split into two rigs, so you'll be across the floor from each other for those toes to bar. Your recipe for success presented for by Trifecta. A lot going on in this one. Yeah, with so many different moving parts, a pretty simple advice. Know your role. Go onto the competition floor. Know the rotations. Know where, who you're going to be paired with when you split for those toes to bar and communicate your role consistently throughout. First of two heats for the teams here in Event 5. Again, they're going back to back. Event 5, then Event 6. In lane number 5 is Three Bridges CrossFit. They are in 11th place overall. They would love to finish this competition inside the top 10. And they ended day two on a high note, their best finish of the weekend in fourth. Remember, going to reseed after this event. So they're right on the cusp of potentially being up in that top heat after this event. Three Bridges CrossFit. Let's take a look at Joey Dennison, the foursome of Joey Dennison, Becca Dennison, Hillary Newald, and Matt Carden. To look at Justin Reidelbach from Sogo Misfits. And then the team from Trivia and Black, that's Ian Chanelli. All four athletes will start this event on the rowers. Men will complete 30 calories. Women will complete 24 calories. The judges are checking the rowers right now to make sure everything is set correctly for the beginning of this event. It's hard knocks in the all red. 
I'm getting shades in the marathon row, Sean, seeing that many <laughs> rowers out on the competition floor. I have a feeling that this event will not take as long as that one. One would hope so. <laughs> All these teams trying to punch their way into the top 10. Let's cross it to Carhu. One minute. And then Blue City will be in the next heat. That is actually the Soko Misfits. We're taking a look at AJ nicely. Strong fix. Everyone's just double checking rowers here to make sure that we are good to go. 30 seconds. Chase Long for across at Jakarhu. Best finish, Yukaru, was a tie for ten four seconds in Fury Road, the second event on day number one. Stand by. And we are underway. Twenty-five minute time cap here in this event. All four athletes rowing to start this thing off. Thirty calories for the men, twenty-four calories for the women, and then after that, they will move to the worm and complete. 20 worm squats and then we will be down to three rowers yeah each time the team completes the worm squats and goes back to the row one fewer athlete will head back and those athletes that stay behind will have to do some burpees over the worm in sync so you're going to have to manage the skills of your team here obviously sending the better rowers back each round and then leaving the other athletes to rip through some burpees each cycle. Sogo Misfits there that we just saw, Justin Reidelbach and AJ Nicely. And lanes one and two, that's Manowar CrossFit. Or pardon me, CrossFit Norwalk and CrossFit Evernox you're taking a look at. You see the athlete in the back right of your screen. Much different stroke rate than her teammate, Christine Glaviano. You see that from some of the shorter athletes sometimes because they don't have the advantage of having that longer leg drive. Now just about every team moving on to the worm. 20 worm squats. And then after this, the teams will send three athletes back to the rower, and then the one athlete who stays at the worm will have to do 20 burpees over the worm. Three bridges cross it in the middle in the all red. Next to them is Hard Knocks on the left in the all red as well, the red top. So now a no rep for Three Kings. North Alpha. And you can see on the left side of your screen there. Oh, quick, quick miscommunication there. Their back athlete thought they were gonna drop and didn't have to move it forward. But on this next round of squats, you're gonna see some teams start to cant their, their leg positioning. The hard knocks, they were the first back. That's Matt Carden for three bridges. He and Lexi Colabianchi, who is the other athlete in the red there, the ones going through the 20 burpees. The hard knocks in lane seven. This is where things get a little interesting, right? If you're the athlete back at the worm, you want to make sure you're moving just quick enough so your team isn't waiting on you to finish. But at the same time, you don't really want to roast yourself going full bore on the burpees and then also be the one lagging behind. 
That's Lexi Pulley-Bianchi for Hard Knocks and Matt Carden for Three Bridges CrossFit. Carden is done with his 20, as is Coley Bianchi. Let's go down to Nikki Brazier, who's on the competition floor. This really interesting layout of this event once again speaks to the experience that the syndicate crew has when it comes to the team competitions. So this event is actually an iteration of one of the community events that the organizers did at their community event called MacFest, except they subbed running for rowing. So now to see these elite teams take it on, it just shows exactly how rooted in the community we are, not only as a sport, but you know in this event as well. The Sogo Misfits were the first done with this second round. They're down in lane number nine. And then Three Kings cross at North Alpha, they were done as well. Now we have five teams back on the worm for their 20 squats. And then they will send two athletes back. There's three bridges in the middle of your screen. And look, just behind the lead athlete, everyone behind him has a slight tilt to their foot position. They're kind of angled a little bit. It allows you a little bit more space to squat. And for some of these athletes, more of the worm is resting across the full breadth of your shoulders instead of just on one side. It's a little bit easier to kind of balance, and it feels more like a traditional back squat in that sense. The three bridges in the middle of your screen and cross at Hard Knocks. Their judges' hands are in the air. The two of them will advance their worms. Then down in lane nine, it's the Sogo Misfits. Now two athletes returning to the worm. The Sogo Misfits sending both of their men back. It's Justin Weidelbach and A.J. Nicely there at the top of your screen. Both Hard Knocks and Three Bridges choosing to go with mixed gender pair, as does Yukarhu. Down in lane number two, cross it Evernox. The partner lane. Three as they have things shifted. This cross with Iconic have sent both of their women back. So interesting strategies here from all these teams. It's, looks like three teams have sent both of their men. And the teams, the two remaining on the worm doing their 20 synchro burpees. Interesting that, you know, three kings. One of the teams on the bubble here in 11th trying to get into that top heat. The last off uh, rower off of the row, the previous round was Hillary Nywald, and they chose to send her back in this third round. That might have been an opportunity to maybe make an adjustment. Hey, if, if she's the one that's the last off the rower, hey, let's send her to the burpees. Let's send our two best rowers back for this th third round. You can see on the, the left box, front right of your screen, Three Bridges still had Hillary on the rower. The well, Hard Knocks is now back. And this will be their third set of 20 worm squats. Seth Sherrod in front for his team. The Sogo Misfits on the left side of your screen sit in second place as Three Bridges has just gotten back to the worm now and they get it hoisted up to their shoulders before the Sogo Misfits do. So Three Bridges back in second place behind Evernox. The two leaders are in the middle of the floor and they're both wearing red tops. Three Bridges is right in the middle. Matt Carden is out front. He's the man with no shirt on. And now Everton Hard Knocks is now moving the worm. They remain in the lead. And Katie Sherritt is going to be the athlete who goes back to the rower for Evernox. Three Bridges is done, and they will send Joey Dennison back to the row as their lone representative on that implement. Yeah. 
There's Joey Dennison working through his 30 calories. Last time he'll be on the rower. Katie Sherritt on the right side of your screen for Hard Knocks. And there are their teams on the left side going through their 20 synchro burpees. And they just have to be synchroed at the bottom as you saw three bridges get a no rep. The chests all have to be on the ground at the same time. That's the only thing that has to be in sync for that movement. And these two teams are in sync with each other right now. Katie Sherritt's judge's hand is in the air on the bottom right hand side of your screen as she's completing her 24 calories. Three Bridges continuing to work through their synchronized burpees as they wait on Joey Dennison. Now Dennison's judge's hand is in the air. Here comes Sherritt back for hard knocks. Twenty worm squats for hard knocks, and then they will move into the second part of this event: the four rounds of the twenty synchro toes to bar and the ten worm hang power clean. Three bridges on the right, Evernox on the left. Three bridges, hard knocks, pardon me. Three bridges much faster in the squat portion. Going almost three to two. Quick break for three bridges. Hard knocks is done. And now they will move into the second part of this event. Lexi Coley-Bianchi and Eric Thomas going to the pull-up bar on the left side of your screen and it's Seth and Katie Sherritt on the right. Three Bridges has now moved on for the second part. And hard Knocks look like they're going with mixed gender pairs. Three Bridges, same gender. 20 synchro toes to bar here and then back to the worm for the 10. Hang power please. It's always interesting to see how they decide to pair up in these scenarios, particularly with different heights and leg lengths. Three Kings cross at North Alpha. They are now on the second half of this event. As is CrossFit Iconic and now the Sogo Misfits. They're at the top of your screen. They are into the second half. And cross at Evernox as well. So most of the teams done with the first part of this two-part event. 25-minute time cap here. The first of two heats and the fifth of six events for the teams. Only one team. And now all teams are on the second part as Hard Knox is back on the worm for their 10 hang power cleans. And three bridges is Picking up the worm as well. So Hard Knocks in the lead. Three Bridges remains in second place here. First of four rounds on the second part of the event. And Hard Knocks had the worm on their right side. It'd be interesting to see if they switch sides for the next round. These worm hand cleans are so unique because of the rotational aspect. Of, you don't really see it in other movements that we do in the gym very often. So the fatigue factor is very, very unique. Three Bridges mixing up their pairs now as they go same gender. The Joey Dennison and Matt Carden pairing up. Becca Dennison and Hillary Nywald par pardoning up. You're looking for the, for the hard knocks team there on the right side of each box. Both teams, of course, wearing red. Thank you for that. <laughs> Hard Knocks taking a break. The pair of Carden and Dennison on the left of your screen continuing to work. Now Thomas and Coley Bianchi back to work on the left box. 
top two teams as they have been pretty much throughout this event. Three Bridges and Hard Knocks. Dennison and Carden are done. They'll head back to the Worm. Hard Knocks has all four of their athletes done. Three Bridges taking a bit of a break here. As Nywald and Dennison continue to work through their toes to bar. And now they got hit with a no rep. Hard Knock starting to open up a bit of a lead here. They're back on their second set of 10 hang power swings. Two rounds remain after this. Hard Knocks is done with their 10. And three bridges now just getting together for their second round. Back to mixed gendered pairs for Hard Knocks. Thomas and Coley Bianchi. And the fighting Sherrits. <laughs> Third of four rounds here for Hard Knocks. Coming in 12th place overall. Their best finish was in the last event when they took sixth place in Mirror Move. Yeah, both Hard Knocks and Three Bridges had their best finish to close day two. They're both on the bubble to move up into the top 10. We've got about 30 points between them and CrossFit Nashville. Nashville was fading towards the back end of day two, so they're gonna need some help in this next heat. I hope that they can have some teams kind of fit in between them to boost up their stock. Now three bridges is back to work. Matt Carden and Joey Dennison on the left side. Nywald and Becca Dennison getting to work for three bridges. But Hard Knocks has half their team done. And now all four are done, and they will complete their third of four rounds of 10 worm hang power plays. They're all by themselves in first place here. is now done and they move their worm up at the far end of the floor in lane nine that's where the Sogo Misfits are and their worm was already there so we're not sure if they have moved into the front or if they just moved their worm early we're trying to figure that out for you it's at the top of your screen the Sogo Misfits who have been towards the front here in parts of this event could be pushing hard knocks right now for the lead We'll keep an eye on them. And I think we have a swap for second, Sean. The crew from CrossFit Evernox just made a huge jump on that last set of toes to bar. They got back to the warm ahead of three bridges, so three bridges starting to fade a little bit here. That is crossing Everdox, the force of Christine Robbie, on the left side of the world, Michael Robbie, and Drew Madrid. With their final step on the total bar, coming up next, but how are our leaders looking to... I am still looking at that judge's hand the on the world. The world of the top of your screen is being unmanned, so we sorted that out. There it is on that center rig, ladies and gentlemen. The hard knock is still in the lead.
The Hard Knocks now has all four of their athletes done with the final round of toes. The bar back to the worm for the final time. Looking home to bring, looking to bring home the Heat win here. The ten reps remain for them. Three reps left. They have one rep left. They dropped it early. And they will complete it. And now Hard Knocks will head to the finish line. Now the race for second. 1906.15 seconds for Hard Knocks. There goes the team for Evernox. They're trying to put the finishing touches on their event as they have moved ahead of three bridges for second place here. Ten hang power cleans remain for them. Final rep for Evernox. And they will take second place in the heat. They come across in 1957.86 seconds. Now less than five minutes remaining before we hit the time cap, and now the crew from Three Bridges is done. Twenty minutes twelve point three four seconds for Three Bridges, a team that was in contention for the Heat win for some time here, but then faded as Evernox was able to overtake them for second. It's the Sogo Misfits, Kayla Kelly, Rachel Crum, Justin Reidelbach, and AJ Nicely. They are on their final set of Hang Power, please. Sogo Misfits are finished. Rachel Krem leading the way to the finish line. And they are done. 20 minutes, 56.23 seconds for them. Less than four to go. Three Kings, CrossFit, North Alpha. Alex Kepke, Marina Clark, Ross Barr, and Michael Spears are set to finish up. They have the run down and they will make their way towards the finish platform. Twenty-one twenty-six point one four seconds. Four teams remain. Cross it iconic. In lane three, Paula Santos, Carly Stone, Dan Hardiman, and Chris Cordova on their final set. As is CrossFit Yakarhu on the right side of your screen. CrossFit Yakarhu, the team of Sarah Hobbs, Taylor Palm, Steve Harris, and Chase Long. And they will finish ahead of Iconic, so Yakarhu gets in inside the 25 minute time cap. Here comes Iconic, they're gonna finish up. The two teams remain on the floor. CrossFit Norwalk, they're in lane one, and CrossFit Trivium Black and Gold. That's Ian Chinelli and Javier Galen, who are still working on their final set of toes to bar. And they will have about two minutes now to complete these 10 warm hand cleans in order to get in inside that time cap. Brittany Stevens and Heather Hippensteel. 
the other two members of that team. The CrossFit Norwalk's on the bottom of your screen. Trivium Black and Gold, they are at the top. Norwalk actually. Norwalk is going to try ahead in that last set. Beat Trivium Black to the finish line. And remember, it's who's wearing the chip that matters. The Norwalk gets in at 23.5. So, sorry, 23 minutes, 50.87 seconds, and Trivium Black and Gold, 23 minutes, 51.50 seconds. So every team in that heat finishing inside the time cap. CrossFit Hard Knocks has the time to beat 1906.15 seconds. We had a little bit of controlled chaos at the start here with 40 rowers humming at the same time. And early on, it was three bridges. CrossFit Hard Knocks out in front during that first portion. But once we got to the second half of this workout, the four rounds of Synchro Toes to Bar and Hank Leans, Hard Knocks took control. Nice steady pace throughout. They had a slight hiccup at the end when they thought they could, they were done. They actually had one more rep. But at that point, they had built enough of a lead, regather their composure, finish up that final rep. And the, a nice finish to open up the final day from the crew from CrossFit Hard Knocks. 19 minutes, 6.15 seconds. The top time in the heat as every team is able to complete that event inside the 25 minutes. CrossFit Evernox, the only other team to go sub 20 on that. Three Bridges CrossFit. They finished in third, followed by the Misfits and the Three Kings CrossFit North Alpha team. 21, 26.14 seconds. Quick break. We'll be back for the final heat of event five next. Action continues here on the third and final day of competition at the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee. Glad you're with us, everybody. Sean Woodland and Tommy Marquez here in the booth. Nikki Brazier's down on the competition floor. Your overall standings after two days of competition. Mayhem Freedom sweeping every event so far, but look how close it is after that. CrossFit Mayhem Justice has just a five-point lead over Overtake Team Density in sixth place. So these next two events will go a long way towards determining who winds up in Madison, Wisconsin. Night at the Roxbury presented by Go What A whole lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, four rounds of a 30 calorie row for the men, 24 for the women, and then 20 worm squats. But the catch is after each round, one fewer athlete goes back to the rower and instead has to stay behind and complete 20 synchro burpees over the worm while his teammates row. Then we have a four round of toes to bar and hang power cleans to finish. Recipe for success presented by Trifecta. And you gotta know your role here. There's so many moving parts. You gotta know exactly what your job is within the, the confines of this event. Man, this is a slog, it's brutal, and communication can break down, so individual responsibility goes a long way in this. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier. Now, one of the most unique elements of this event is this A-frame rig that you see here in the middle of the competition floor. This is the first event to have more than one rig, and if you recognize this, it's because it's actually the exact same Very rig nice. from the Coliseum at the CrossFit Games. Let's see if it has some good juju from the games here for these athletes. Lena Simons for the second and final heat. There's only going to be nine teams on the floor. CrossFit National has withdrawn. They would have been down in lane number 10. But in lane number three, training Think Tank CrossFit seconds. right now, they are in fifth place courtesy of a tie break with CrossFit Overtake Team Density. Yeah, we have a three-way tie between training Think Tank, Eighth Day CrossFit Black, and CrossFit Overtake Team Density. The, te the three teams that are on your screen Pretty much kind of a win in your in scenario as far as moving up into the top five with these. But also remember, they're also only five points back of Mayhem Justice. So a lot at stake that could change here going into the finale. 
We start with all four athletes on the rowers. 30 calories for the men, 24 calories for the women. Then they're going to assemble at the worm and perform 20 worm squats. Time to beat belongs to CrossFit Hard Knocks. 19 minutes, 6.15 seconds. There's Mayhem Freedom. They have won all four events so far. The only question remaining for them is, can they sweep all six? A little bummed, Sean. Night at the Roxbury, no one came dressed up as the Butabi brothers. Expecting a little, a little more flair. Need to talk to them about their flair. <laughs> I don't hear it. CLT in lane six, getting off first, followed by the crew from Mayhem. 20 worm squats for CrossFit CLT right now. CLT sits solidly in second place. They have a 30 point lead on CrossFit Mayhem Justice for that spot. Miscommunication there from the Mayhem team. Got a quick no rep, got out of sync. They've got that sorted. CLT has the worm down. And they will send everyone but Hunter Williams back to the rowers. So Stevie Dellinger, Carolyn Clutch, and Kevin Steinhaus will be rowing for CLT. Mayhem leaves Sam Cornwaye on the rower. They're back. Eighth day CrossFit Black. They're also back on the rowers. Eighth day CrossFit Black. One of the teams in that three way tie. They currently sit in fourth place because of the tiebreaker. The CLT on the right side of your screen, the team that sits in second place. The athletes back in the worm have to complete 20 burpees over the worm. When it's more than one person, those become synchro. The calories remain the same on the rower for the men and the women. 30 calories for the men, 24 calories for the women. Then it's back to the worm for 20 more squats. CLT is done, and they are in the lead here. Looking to really solidify a spot inside the top five in this event. May and freedom is done. Eight day CrossFit Black. They will be the third team back to the worm. Overtake team density out there as well towards the front. CLT advancing the worm, and now they will send Steinhaus and Clutch back to the rower. Now here are your standings, again coming into this event, the two teams on the outside looking in that are closest to training Think Tank, Team Density and Blues at City CrossFit Gold. That is overtake Team Density. Right now on the outside looking in, moving into third place. They are in a close battle with Los De La Isla for third in the heat. Top two spots along the CLT and Mayhem Freedom. 
And seeing Andrea and Taylor both on the rower just shows you how much trust they have in you know, their aerobic capacity on the machines. And both Rich and Sam stayed behind for the burpees. Triple T CrossFit, they're on the left side. They currently sit in fifth place overall. And Mia Ginelli and Mike McGoldrick on the rower for them. And then in the bottom right, that's Randy McGoldrick and Christopher Nashevsky on those synchro burpees. CLT is now done as they move back to the worm for the third time for their set of 20 worm squats. After this part of the event, the next part is the four rounds of the 20 synchro toes of bar and the 10 worm hang power clean. The CLT getting to work before Rich Groning and CrossFit Mayhem. They're the only two teams on their third round of 20 worm squats. Now overtake team density is done. That's big for them as they are ahead of training think tank. The team immediately ahead of them in the overall standings due to a tie break. Mayhem Justice is now working their way back to the worm as well as Mayhem Freedom starting to close. advance the worm and they are closing the gap. The previous round, the CLT was seven worm squats ahead of Mayhem when they finished. Mayhem was only two squats behind, but more importantly, their transition with the worm. They basically pulled even with CLT there. That's Kevin Steinhaus on the right for CLT going up against Taylor Williamson on the left. Now Steinhaus has got to complete 30 calories. Williamson only has to complete 24. And that's, that's the benefit of having an athlete like Taylor Williamson. He's tall, really, really strong. A lot of times, you know, you see some of the, the numbers that I've heard from her in training. She can pull very similar to most male athletes, too. So not only does she get the benefit of pulling fewer calories, too, she can hang with them pace-wise. Let's bring in Nikki Brazier. I was catching up with Luke Espy, who helped program this event. He's a longtime CrossFit Games team member and 12 Labors CrossFit member as well. And talking about all the moving parts that happen here and almost in this devilish kind of way because he has so much experience on a team. He said he really programmed this event to make it so that it experience that these people can experience kind of all the worst parts of being on a team, if you will. Never being able to take a break, having to really strategize and also really exposing the weaknesses of each and every member and that you really can't have it if you want this event to be successful. Kevin Steinhaus is done for CLT and now here comes Taylor Williamson. The CLT has the worm hoisted up on their shoulders. They got four reps in before Mayhem started. And the difference you could see there is Mayhem got to the worm, immediately hands on the worm, picked it up, no hesitation. CLT took a break when they were all standing there. They took a beat when the worm was on their shoulder before squatting. In the last round, Mayhem was significantly faster on the 20 worm squats with CLT having to take a break. Mayhem has closed the gap. They are just now a rep behind both teams at about the same time. Now they move on to the second part of this event. The synchro toes to bar, 20 reps they need to complete, 10 worm hang power cleans, four rounds. Meanwhile, Battle for third place in this heat, and it's important. CrossFit overtakes Team Density in the all red. They are ahead right now, but not by much of training Think Tank. Overtake Team Density coming in in sixth place overall. Tied in points with training Think Tank. And that's eighth day CrossFit on the right-hand side, too. They're also tied at 295.
So eight day CrossFit Black just trying to stick close to overtake team density as both of those teams are now ahead of training Think Tank and they will join our leaders, CLT and Mayhem Freedom on the pull-up bar. Mayhem Freedom has taken the lead now from CLT. They are on their first of four sets of 10 worm hang power cleans. And they got through all of them before CLT even picked up the worm. And that's... You talk about experience as a team, the familiarity, familiarity with the worm. It's becoming a little bit more common as more and more gyms and, and teams, you know, have access to the equipment. But one thing that has been constant throughout Mayhem Freedom's reign at the top of the Affiliate Cup division is their proficiency with the worm. And a quick note, Sean, that training think tank and Mayhem Justice finished up that first portion at the same time. So Mayhem Justice is, you know, in third right now, but they're also only five points ahead. So everything is up for grabs here. And a lot of teams are kind of grouped together with eighth day and overtake and then training think tank and justice side by side. Well, eighth day is looking, has looked like they moved ahead now of overtake team density. Those teams right next to each other, overtake team density in the all red. And Mayhem Freedom is now done with their second round at Toes to Bar. They go back to the worm and they are really starting to put some distance between themselves and CLT. The CLT solidly in second place right now. They have a 30 point lead over CrossFit Mayhem Justice for that spot. So right where CLT is right now is just fine for them in the big picture. Final rep for Mayhem. And it looks like they are well on their way towards winning their fifth straight event here at the Syndicate Crown. And the CLT is back to the worm as overtake team density. An eighth day on their left hand side. Eighth day got up about five to six reps ahead of Team Density, both teams taking significant breaks after their last warm, warm portion. Overtake Team Density's men on the left, Casey Strong and Marco Coppola. And it's Ryan Schaefer and Heather Poss for eighth day on the left side of the screen. And now eighth day goes back to the worm. They're starting to put some breathing room between themselves and Overtake Team Density. And training think tank. The eighth day cross at black, fourth place overall coming into this event, trying to get out of that log jam for those final two spots. 1906.15 seconds is the time to beat here. Eighth day going back for Round three. Overtake Team Density is finishing up round two of their hang power cleans. There's Ryan Schaefer on the left side of your screen. Zoe Jones and Michael Poss on the right. For eighth day CrossFit as Mayhem Freedom has knocked out their third of four rounds. And they continue to lead. Cornway and Frody back to the pull-up bar. Taking some time to chalk up. They have no reason to be in a hurry here. As Williamson and Nistler get started on their set of 20. We are still four minutes away. CLT is still in second place, but it's a distant second right now. But again, ahead of all the teams right behind them in the overall standings. Five more to go. 
on the three tier ring closest to the wall. And we watch CLT. Final rest for Froning and Cornway 8. Missler and Williamson only have four reps remaining. Just a couple more reps to go. And then it's 10 final hang power cleans. And looking like Mayhem Freedom is going to win their fifth straight event and stay perfect here at the Syndicate Crown. Eighth day, Crossed Black. Their men are in the gray tops in the middle of your screen. They are on their third set of hang cleans. And they actually switch sides from the previous round. Haven't seen very many teams do that, but when you're hinging and rotating so much and favoring one side, his team starts to build up, and I like the move from Mayhem. Overtake team density there, down with round three. Mayhem is done with the whole thing. And another event and another win for Mayhem Freedom, and they smash CrossFit Hard Knocks time, 16.25.76. For Mayhem Freedom. And now we've got a couple of races on the bubble coming down to this final round. That's CLT. Trying to close this thing out. Kevin Steinhaus and Carolyn Plutz are done, and they will go back to the worm. They came in in second place overall. They had a 30-point lead on CrossFit Mayhem Justice for that spot. So CLT is going to be looking really good after this event. And these are the two of the other teams on the other side of the floor that are on the bubble race. On the right-hand side, you can see Training Think Tank. Blue City in seven. And you're going to see on the right-hand side Mayhem Justice, you, you can see that nobody's on the pull-up bar yet. They're just now getting to their toes to bar. So Training Think Tank ahead of Mayhem Justice, who's only five points ahead of them. So even though Training Think Tank has fallen behind eighth day and overtake, they can still hold on to a top five spot just by virtue of the points gained over Mayhem Justice. And there goes CLT. And that is gonna be good enough for second place in the event, 95 points, and they might want to start making some travel reservations for Madison. Here comes eighth day CrossFit Black. They're gonna take third place in the event. They'll earn 90 points in the process. And they look to move into third place all by themselves. If they get one more team between themselves, and CrossFit Mayhem Justice, and it could be Overtake Team Density, then they day will move into third place overall. Here comes Overtake Team Density. And that's a big finish for Team Density, because remember the top time from the previous heat just past the 19 minute mark. That means they're gonna put some space between them and Training Think Tank and Mayhem Justice with that extra team slotting in. Overtake Team Density looking to vault into the top four, it's training Think Tank, Mia Ginelli and Mike McGoldrick. Waiting for Brandy McGoldrick and Christopher Dushevsky to get started on their final set of hang cleans. Now Dushevsky and McGoldrick are done. And Mayhem Justice just pulled back in front of them on that last set of toes to bar. Training Think Tank got tied up on their very last rep. The training Think Tank is in danger of falling out of the top five here. Only two reps remain for Mayhem Justice. Final rep for Mayhem Justice, and they are in. So CrossFit Mayhem Justice looking to hang on to their top five spot. Training Think Tank may be on the outside looking in with one event to go. And smart move that the team from Mayhem Justice cleared the way for their athlete with the ankle bracelet to get out in front. All of their three teammates just kind of backed up and said, you go. Get to the finish line. Three teams remain on the floor. That's Los de la Isla CrossFit, Rene Aponte, Vic Mary Torres, Luis Nunez Hernandez, and Zummer Pagan. Are in. 
That leaves Blue City CrossFit gold. And Man of War CrossFit still on the floor. Blue City seventh place overall coming into this event. They are in danger of falling farther down the leaderboard right now. Man of War getting back to the worm for the final time. Blue City is down to singles. They only needed one more. But they were not that far out of a spot inside the top five. They were only 15 points back of training Think Tank for that final spot. So Blue City CrossFit is going to have some work to do in the final event if they want to find their way into the top five. And they're going to be the last team to finish as Manowar got in ahead of them. And now times from the other heats are starting to come into play here. Yeah, about four or five times from the previous heat factoring in and unfortunately going to drive Blue City a little bit further down the leaderboard. Now Blue City is going to wind up with a 14th place finish in that event. Rich Froning and his team have been perfect so far. They have won every single event. With one remaining, they look to stay perfect. There is Blue City and Let's see what an effect of this event had on them. This event just crushing these teams. And a big start in mass on the rower. And early on, CLT moved to the front, but Mayhem reeled them in. And by the time we got to the second portion of this workout, it was all Mayhem all the time, beating the previous top time by nearly three minutes. And Rich had enough time to pause and make sure he grabbed his belt and grabbed his stuff along the way. But overtake team density came in a three-way tie in points on six, just outside of the qualifying position. They get a huge, huge result here. Their time at 1840 should be good enough for fourth in the event. They're going to pick up some points, move into a qualifying spot, and that's where you want to be going into the finale. 16 minutes, 25 0.76 seconds for CrossFit Mayhem. The only team to go sub 18. CLT looks like they're going to lock up a spot inside the top five with that second place finish. And then beyond that, it's still up for grabs. Overtake Team Density finishes fourth. They look to punch their way into the top five. And they are with Nikki Brazier. Guys, when you start the last day of competition kind of on the bubble, what is the mindset going into this first event? How do you push forward? It's pretty simple. We just knew that we had to come in and fight today. That was the whole idea, the whole preference of the word and understanding it. We screwed up earlier in the weekend, and we'd like to probably have been talking to you a lot earlier. Yeah. But uh, we know there's one day left. There's two workouts. Now there's one. We did a decent job on this one, did what we thought we could do, and that's all we really can do. Last one's, you know, for us, it's winner take all. Okay. We know what we're coming in here for, and uh, we won't be satisfied with anything else other than going to Madison. Wow. So many moving parts in this event that we just watched and really you never get to take a break. What was your strategy going into it? Man, we knew this one was going to be pain yeah. Yeah. and that's where we thrive. We want it to hurt as much as possible. Everybody else hurts. We got faith in each other, faith in God that we're going to be able to push through and uh, get the job done. Well, congrats guys. Nice work. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Overtake Team Density looking to find themselves inside the top five and fourth place finish in that heat and in the event will go a long way towards accomplishing that. One event remains here at the Syndicate Crown and then we will know who will be representing this semifinal in Madison, Wisconsin. We know one of those teams Will be Mayhem Freedom. CLT looking good as well, but three spots still up for grabs. Stay with us, everybody, here in Knoxville. The 
2022 Syndicate Crown is brought to you by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. By Arosti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. By Thor, the official supplement partner of CrossFit. By the U.S. Army, know your army. And by Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. 
It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. No bull. The reason I started using Thorn products was because uh, Steph Nikitas, she was very influential in terms of what products we should use and what are the good products out there. I always want to make sure that I'm sharing trusted companies and products with others and Thorn definitely fits that. NSF is a priority for me because I know it's a quality product. NSF certification is a gold standard for supplements. You know that what it says on the label is actually in the bottle.
A lead at 30 seconds. They've got the edge. Oh, man. Is equipment in neutral? What's going on there? Look at that pitter-patter of his feet. Equipment pulling ahead now, but Team Judgment trying to come from behind. They got to watch fitness all weekend. Now's their chance to get in the mix. Come on, folks. You can be louder than that. I know it's been a long weekend thus far, but show your volunteers some love. The equipment crew... Almost with athlete two. And we're gonna add a little level of difficulty in lane number two. The equipment crew being thrown a little monkey wrench. And now it looks like team judgment in second as the equipment crew gives Noah a little rod. Wow, those guys are strong. Two down. On to athlete number three. So the equipment crew, even with Noah still in the saddle, with their fourth and final volunteer continuing to show their work ethic out here on the competition floor. But what about team judgment and team athlete relations? We got a close race for second place. Who's going to take it? as the equipment crew does their victory lap. And I think this is the final one. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your equipment crew, showing they are well-versed in the torque tank, the official resistance sled of the syndicate crowd. But second place is still up for grabs. Team Judgment making a strong push, figuratively and literally. And they uphold the standard, and they did it the right way. Second place is good. No shoes for Team Athlete Relations, electing to go barefoot here as they shut it down. And finally, Team Medical closing it out. Uh-oh. 
Team Judgment made a reset their sled, and that's a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, one more big round of applause for all of our volunteers out here on the competition floor. All of our volunteers busting their butts all weekend long. Now it's time for them to enjoy a nice Yerbe to recharge for our next event. Great job, judges. Great job, medical. Great job, equipment crew. And great job, athlete relations. These selfless individuals giving up their weekends with an S there at the end to make sure that the syndicate crown and our semifinal season goes off without a hitch. And now they've got to get their heart rate down and recover because we're back at it here in no time at all. 10-32, the start of heat number one of your team final here at the Syndicate Crown getting underway.
Two minutes before action continues with our teams in the event known as Diddy Kong. In lane two, the Sogo Misfits. One event remains in the team competition here at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum at the Syndicate Crown. And at the end, we will know the five teams that will be heading to Madison, Wisconsin to compete in the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Team Event 6 presented by Thorne. Get out your controllers, <laughs> a little energy drink. We're going with Diddy Kong Racing here. You know, it came standard with the N64, but for this one, we're going to line up old school relay style, 12 ring muscle-ups, nine deficit handstand push-ups, six heavy sandbag to shoulders, and then three squat cleans and a 14-minute cap. It'll go with both the males, then both the females. Recipe for success in this one presented by Trifecta. You know, I, anytime we get a relay format, I like to leave with strength. You know, with the, the first athlete in the male pairing and the female pairing, get your best horse out there. You can get a lead, lead from the front a little bit, and then back and tag. The one big hiccup here, at the, the, the most costly rep here, is the, the sandbag. We have a heavy sandbag, 200 pounds for men, 150 for the women. You've got to be very methodical and make sure you don't have any slip-ups on that implement. Eight teams in this first of two heats. All of these teams looking to have a strong finish here so they can wind up inside the top 10 at the end of the weekend. It's Justin Reidelbach from the Sogo Misfits. They had a pretty strong performance in the last event. We are underway. Two men go first, then the two women. Relay style, Reidelbach out first for the Sogo Misfits. 12 ring muscle ups, and then it's the nine deficit handstand push ups. Nine inch deficit for the men, followed by the six sandbag to shoulders, 200 pounds for the men, and then three squat cleans to close things out at 275 pounds. Just about every man onto his set of nine deficit handstand push-ups. In lane four, that is CrossFit Evernox out front early. Like Michael Hernandez is out there for them first. I remember these teams just did a ton of midline work with those synchro toes to bar under fatigue. You know, if you haven't used the heavy sandbag a lot, that, that hip drive, the opening of the hip to get it up to the shoulder puts a lot of stress on your abdominals. Graham Winchester's on the right side of your screen for Man of War CrossFit. Six reps here on this sandbag, 200 pounds on that thing, and they have to get it to their shoulders. And now, Michael Hernandez moving up to the 275 pound barbell, three squat cleans here. Justin Reidelbach for the Sogo Misfits is also moving up to the barbell. First rep for Hernandez is good. Reidelbach has his first in the books. Ooh, touch and go, love to see it. Reidelbach's gonna put the finishing touches on these, and he is done to the Sogo Misfits in first, thanks to the efforts of Justin Reidelbach. And that'll bring out AJ Nicely, who is getting to work on his 12 ring muscle ups. And Michael Hernandez for Evernox putting the finishing touches on his set of three, and that will bring out Andrew Madrid.
The Sogo Misfits in the lead, followed by CrossFit Evernox. And in lane seven, CrossFit Trivium Black and Gold sit in third. Javier Galen finishing up his three squat cleans at 275. Andrew Madrid is done with the muscle ups and now onto his nine deficit handstand push ups at that nine inch deficit. Trying to keep pace with AJ Nicely from the Sogo Misfits. You just saw the female athlete from Evernox run through the screen. She's going to come back on in just a second. She ran all the way across the floor, put a piece of chalk down, taking care of that now. Madrid is done. He'll move to the sandbag. Six sandbags to shoulder at 200 pounds. AJ Nicely, who is on the right side of your screen, is in the lead for the Sogo Misfits. So far, these athletes handling this he heavy sandbag fairly well. Getting that initial pull off the ground up to the hip and popping it right up. You know, sometimes you see him struggle to do more of a traditional like stone style lift with a strong man where you'll shelf it at the hip, really squat down, get more real estate up on the back before driving the hip open. AJ Nicely is done with the sandbag. And now his three squat cleans at 275 pounds. And here comes Andrew Madrid. Madrid out across at Evernox. Trying to keep his team in second place between, behind AJ Nicely and the Sogo Misfits. Nicely, no rep on his second attempt here. Might open the door for Madrid, who's belting up a couple lanes down. And, and that just speaks to the fatigue that these athletes have over the course of the weekend. You know, this 275 pound barbell, we saw a lot of these athletes snatching that or, or at least close to it in the opening event and now really having to dig just to get a, a squat clean rep in. Madrid on the right side was able to make his first rep nicely is through two of his three. And that's rep number three for AJ Nicely. So the Sogo Misfits have both Reidelbach and Nicely through. They'll turn things over to their women. And Rachel Crum is going to be out first for them. Christine Glaviano and Lex Aguilar looking on as Andrew Madrid tries to finish up his set. for the Sogo Misfits. And now Lex Aquilar getting to work for Evernox. Kayla Kelly has moved on to the deficit handstand push-ups. The Sogo Misfits remain in the lead here. And Rachel Crum in the back. Going to run the anchor leg here. 14 minute time cap, first of two heats. The final event for the teams. Kayla Kelly with four reps remaining. And there's Lex Aguilar on the left side, still working through a muscle ups. Sogo Misfits and CrossFit Evernox, the only two teams to get both of their men through. Kayla Kelly now to the sandbag, 150 pounds for the women. Six reps here. Go. 
Aguilar has five reps remaining on the muscle ups. She's on the left side of your screen for Evernox. Kayla Kelly continues to work through the sandbag. After this, Kelly will go to the barbell 185 pounds. Three squat cleans there to finish things up. And then that will bring Rachel Crum out as the last athlete on the floor for Sogo. Over in lane six and seven, three Kings CrossFit North Alpha and CrossFit Trivium Black and Gold are starting to push Evernox for second place here. And they have passed Evernox. Heather Hippensteel, the athlete for Trivium in that first event yesterday with the legless rope climbs. Trivium had a strong performance and it was largely on the back of Hippensteel's skill on the rope. Clearly good at upper body pulling when it comes to the gymnastics. And she's moved them, it looks like, almost into a clear second place right now. The hip and steel is first to the bag. Ahead of, I believe it's Marina Clark who's out there for North Alpha. Meanwhile, Kayla Kelly is going through her squat cleans at 185. And once she gets through these three reps, Rachel Crum will be the last woman out for the Sogo Misfits. Crum on the left side of your screen. This is four minutes remaining before we hit the time cap here. Kayla Kelly is in, and here comes Rachel Crum. The Sogo misses with three of their four athletes through. They are in the lead here in this first of two heats. And Crum's just going to try to get as much in as she can here. As we have three and a half minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Sogo misses on the left in first place. Three Kings cross at North Alpha. And Trivium Black and Gold on the right. We're seeing both, in second. both three Kings and Trivium struggling with the, hand, the sandbag a little bit. Much different than we're used to seeing most of the time with this heavy sandbag where it can go over the shoulder. And really, there's just less to think about when you can just fire the hip and let that big sandbag go flying over your shoulder. Having to stabilize it and show control at the top. Heather Hippensteel is really laboring with that thing on the right side. Marina Clark is on the left for Three Kings North Alpha. That's Lex Aquar in lane four for Evernox finally getting to the barbell. And she pulled ahead during the sandbag. She made quick work of it. We're seeing a little jockeying back and forth for position from each implement. Marina Clark is also on to the barbell for Three Kings North Alpha. Aquar had a really great event one. To start things off here, that's Marina Clark on the right. For North Alpha, less than two to go before we hit the time cap. So Aquilar is in. Evernox is going to get their last athlete out onto the floor at least. That's Christine Glaviano, who is now on to the rings. Ninety seconds to go. Rachel Crum from the Sogo Misfits is on the sandbag. She's trying to amass as many repetitions as she possibly can here. As we now have one minute to go before we hit the time cap.
Another rep down for Crum. Less than 40 to go. She's got four of her six reps down. One rep remaining for Crum on the sandbag. Ten seconds to go. And Crum is going to get credit for it. The Sogo Misfits get their final athlete through the sandbag. No one able to finish this event inside the 14-minute time cap. As we get set for the final heat, we'll figure out who's going to the CrossFit Games next at the Syndicate Crown. CrossFit Games coming up in just a moment. I tell you what, Dylan, we have an exciting race happening at 10.51. Dylan, listen to this. Only the top five teams are going to punch their ticket to the Noble CrossFit Games this year. Right now, in fifth place, is CrossFit Mayhem Justice with, with 375 points. Training Think Tank currently sits in the sixth position outside of that bubble with 365 points. That means that 10 points separate the trip to Madison or not. I think the DJ saw my hat and decided he was going to match. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. Are you having a good time? Seriously, are you having a good time? Very good, very good. Look at this guy in the yellow shirt. He's not really texting, he just wants everybody to see his muscles. It's okay. Who's going to Madison? We're about to find out here in the final event for the team competition at the Syndicate Crown. Thanks for being with us here inside the Knoxville Civic Coliseum, everybody. Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. This is where we stand coming into the sixth and final event. Mayhem Freedom and CLT relatively safe. Eighth day CrossFit Black still has some work to do, as do Overtake Team Density and Mayhem Justice. Justice only a 10 point lead over training think tank CrossFit. Blues City CrossFit Gold is mathematically alive, but it would take a miracle right now for them to get in to the top five. Event number six presented by Thorne Diddy Kong Racing. Yep, get those N64 controllers out. We're doing it old school, just like the schoolyard. We're going to line up and have a relay race. Both the males will go first, then the females. Each athlete will do 12 ring muscle-ups, nine deficit handstand push-ups, six heavy sandbags to shoulders, and three squat cleans. That last barbell, 275 for the men, 185 for the women. And a 14-minute cap. Didn't see any team in the previous heat finish. The recipe for success presented by Trifecta is lead with strength. I mean, you get your fastest horse out there when the first athlete for the men and for the women. We saw a lot of teams with athletes just stuck at the start line. Get as much as you can done as quickly as you can. And bag and tag, that heavy sandbag has stopped a lot of these athletes in their tracks. Making sure you have good technique, no failed reps there, because that's a costly no rep for such a long and belabored movement. Let's check in with Nikki Brazier, who's on the competition floor. 
Now, we've talked so much about the team dynamic here at the Syndicate Crown, but the event organizers, of course, wanted each individual athlete to also have a chance to shine. So, enter in this relay style event. Now, they predicted that the make or break moment would be here at the Queens, but they're calling it Diddy Kong Racing because no matter what, you got to keep your foot on the gas and there's no room for error. I don't know, I'm more of a Mario Kart gal myself. What about you guys? That was the one game I got really good at. Oh, man. I, 64 Mario Kart. That was okay. my jam. I love Diddy Kong Racing. I took down Wiz Pig in no time. Here are the 10 teams in the second and final heat, and in lanes three and lanes eight. That's the battle for the fifth and final spot between Mayhem Justice on the left side of your screen. They currently sit in that last qualifying spot. They have a 10-point lead on Mike McGoldrick and training Think Tank. We are underway. Men will go first, and then they will hand things off to the women. We didn't see a single team in heat number one finish this event inside the 14-minute time cap. Probably going to change here in heat number two. We kick things off with the 12-ring muscle-ups. That's Ben Davidson, who's going to go out first for Mayhem Justice. Right now, they sit in fifth place overall. Ten points up on training Think Tank. They're only five points back of overtake team density for fourth and 10 points back of eighth they cross it black for third. So th three spots in the top five still up for grabs. 20 points separate triple T from eighth day, or triple T and six from eighth day and third. You know, that's four or five spots on the leaderboard. That could change in the blink of an eye. Former individual games athlete Mike McGoldrick on the left side of your screen. First out for training Think Tank going through his Nine deficit handstand push-ups, nine inch deficit for the men, six inch deficit for the women. Sam Cornwye is gonna be the first man to the sandbag. Next to him is CrossFit CLT, and that is Hunter Williams. Those two teams relatively safe. Overtake team density. Watch McGoldrick with the bag here in the far end of your screen, the tie-dye pink shirt. He is incredibly strong. Casey Strong is out there for overtake team density. They're trying to stay inside the top five. McGoldrick cleared the snatch ladder. He's one of the strongest athletes in the field. Going to move the sandbag well, and then, you know, if you're on the bubble, take a chance maybe and try and go tap and go on those three cleans at 275. That's a beat. Mayhem Justice and leapfrog them in the standings. Training Think Tank's going to have to beat them by at least two spots. Sam Cornwye strolls up to the 275-pound barbell. And he's got Hunter Williams from CLT right behind him. Mike McGoldrick will be the third man to the barbell. Casey Strong for overtake team density. And down in lane number two, Blues City CrossFit Gold. Sending Steven Wallace to this barbell. He's in the bottom right. He might go touch and go on these. And now a no rep for Ben Davidson for Justice. Wallace is across. Blue City CrossFit gold leads here. And you hope that was maybe just a slip up with the grip for Ben Davidson, considering that you're already seeing multiple teams get their first athlete across the finish line. And Mike McGoldrick is across. Christopher Nashevsky is on the rings. And Ben Davidson from Mayhem Justice has just finished. So there are some teams right now between training Think Tank and Mayhem Justice. Seth Stovall is on the left for Justice. And it's Chris Nashevsky on the right for training Think Tank. Final rep for Nashevsky. He is through onto the deficit handstand push-ups. Rich Froning is on the sandbag for Mayhem Freedom. They are leading right now. Blue City CrossFit sits in second place in the heat. Here are your standings once again. Triple D CrossFit with a 10-point deficit. They need to make up on Mayhem Justice to get themselves into the top five. They got to beat them by at least two spots, and then it comes down to a tie break after that. Rich Froning on the far right side of your screen in the red top is moving to the barbell. As Mayhem looking to stay perfect here. Christopher Nashevsky 
And on the right side of your screen, we saw him going through the sandbag for big, training think tank. Big picture for Mayhem Freedom. Reckovic went six for six out at the low end. So trying to match that same score. A perfect 600. And Froning is through. Now to bring out Taylor Williamson for Mayhem. Chris Nashevsky now moving up to the barbell. And Marco Coppola in the background in the red shirt and the ponytail. Lane seven, overtake Team Densing. They're right in the mix as well. Only five points ahead of Justice and 15 ahead of training Think Tank. So another team we got to keep our eye on here in this race as things get heated. Seth Stovall for Mayhem Justice is moving to the barbell. And here comes Marco Coppola for overtake Team Density. So now we're training Think Tank with both of their male athletes through. Justice has got to start worrying about overtake Team Density and try and win that race. Mia Ginelli is on the rings for training Think Tank as Stovall cannot hit that rep. Marco Coppola is making pretty fast work of the barbell for overtake Team Density. And Coppola is through two of his three reps. Stovall misses again. Both of the Justice athletes missed their first clean at this 275. Coppola is through, so overtake Team Density is now ahead of Mayhem Justice. That's big for training Think Tank, because now they have the teams they need in between themselves. And Mayhem Justice, Stovall again has things sorted now on the left side of your screen. Mia Ginelli is on the right. She has three of her 12 muscle-ups remaining here. 14-minute time cap, eight minutes to go. Stovall is now through. So Anison Sudhoff for Justice on the rings on your left is Mia Ginelli is working on her deficit handstand push-up. Six inch deficit here, nine repetitions she needs to complete. Training Think Tank trying to make up ten points on Mayhem Justice to get themselves inside the top five and earn a trip to the CrossFit Games. And Team Density, Shea Williams in the red shirt right next to Training Think Tank also on the handstand push-ups. Ginelli takes a break. She's got four left. Sudhoff is still working on her muscle-ups for Mayhem Justice. And on eight, the left side of your screen. And eight-day CrossFit also on their first female on the muscle-ups as well. All four teams in contention are close. And now a no rep for Ginelli. She has three reps remaining. Sudhoff with two on the muscle-ups. And that is not a good sign, especially for deficit handstand push-ups. Those don't come back easy. That one was close, very close. May have just had her feet on the wall long enough for that rep to count. Final two reps for Janelli, and now one remains. Sudhoff is now done with her ring muscle-ups. And Shea Williams from Overtake Team Density has actually pulled to the front and almost even with CLT. Janelli has got to be worried about Mayhem Justice. Overtake is ahead of training Think Tank in the standings. And now Sudhoff is done with the deficit handstand push-ups. So she is even now with Mia Janelli here on the sandbag. Six reps they need to complete on this 150-pound bag. You see Shea Williams right there to the left as well. They're going rep for rep on these sandbags. Overtake Team Density, fourth place overall. Only a five-point lead on Mayhem Justice. Williams has moved ahead of Janelli here. Anderson Sudhoff on the left was able to make up some ground courtesy of her effort on the wall with those deficit handstand push-ups. Nine minutes gone by. Five remain here.
an eight-day CrossFit gym. They've moved back out into the front. They're first to the squat clean. Zoe Jones is onto the barbell for eighth-day CrossFit. We have to wish a happy birthday to Ryan Schaefer, who's a member of that team. Well, this is the battle for fifth on your screen right now. On the left, Mayhem Justice, fifth place overall coming into the event. Training Think Tank CrossFit in sixth place, 10 points back. Andrea Nistler is moving to the barbell as Mayhem Freedom looking to go six for six and win every event here. Amir Janelli is now done along with Anderson Sudhoff. They will get to the barbell at the same time. It's not enough for Training Think Tank just to beat Mayhem Justice. They got to beat him by at least two spots. And it should be noted that Mayhem Freedom is a full round ahead of everyone. That's their last athlete. Sudhoff on the left is done with the rep as Andrea Nistler wraps up the sixth straight win for Mayhem Freedom. Shea Williams is across for overtake team density. Mia Janelli with another rep down. So eighth day and, oh, and team density, the two teams that Justice and Training Team Tank are chasing. Ahead through three athletes. Brandy McGoldrick is on to the rings. Anderson Sudoff is across for Justice. Jessica Kalagian now on to the rings. The pressure is on Brandy McGoldrick on the left side of your screen. She's got to stay ahead of Justice and hope someone gets between the two of them in order to give Training Think Tank the help that they need to erase that 10-point deficit. Oof, a close call with the athlete from 8th Day CrossFit. They fell through the rings. Scary moment there, but it looks like she's all right. But even still, that, that slip up in a cl close race could cost her. Alexis Bergen in the red top for to overtake Team Density is on to the handstand push-ups. One more look at your standings. That's how close it is. Just 15 points separating fourth from sixth. Kalagian on the left. McGoldrick on the right. McGoldrick trying to finish up this set of 12. She has one left. Kalagian has three. Now, almost two minutes remaining. And scores from the first heat could come into play here because remember in heat number one, no one was able to finish the event. Evernox got the farthest. They got their final woman through the sandbag queens. Here comes Kalagian, who is done with the deficit handset push-up. She has moved ahead of Brandy McGoldrick. This is big for Mayhem Justice as they look to send two teams from the Syndicate crown to the CrossFit Games. Brandy McGoldrick at the top of your screen is still on the deficit handstand push-ups. She has three left. You saw Kalagian on the floor, took a quick look back to see where McGoldrick was. Now two reps remaining and we have one minute to go. McGoldrick with one to go as Kalagian continues to amass reps on the sandbag. Less than 45. McGoldrick is running out of time. And now she has to make really quick work of the sandbag. I believe Kalagian had Rich Froning looking at Kalagian saying, slow down, you're okay. Five seconds to go. If she can get a rep here, that will help. And it looks like she stood it up before the time cap. Mayhem Justice may have done enough to stay in fifth place overall. They did beat the team right behind them. Brandy McGoldrick just did not have enough in the tank to catch Kalagian there at the end. It's looking like the possible record of sending three teams to the games is alive if Justice holds on. Joining their Mayhem Freedom counterparts. Let's go, guys!
Hats off to overtake team density in eighth day CrossFit for hanging in the pocket too. They were, they weren't clear. And they were in a battle during that female portion, both female one and female two. And we saw some flip flop in here and there between each implement. And I mean, credit to all four teams. That was just a phenomenal race. Anderson Sudhoff was able to take the lead from Mia Ginelli in that race. And then she handed it off to Kalagian, who made quick work of the deficit handstand push ups. And you got a feel for McGoldrick and Ginelli right now. That is CrossFit CLT. They were solidly in second place coming into this event. They did what they needed to do and avoided a major disaster. We will have the official announcement coming up. But the scoring department now just making sure they tabulate everything correctly. But let's take a look back here. Mayhem Freedom, no doubt, six for six. Yeah, Rich Froning was the second male athlete to get across, and by that point, they had almost lapped the field. No question for them, six straight wins. And then the race really came down to Triple triple T, training Think Tank CrossFit, and Mayhem Justice. They were the two teams in fifth and sixth, only 10 points separating. And we saw some back and forth. Training Think Tank pulled ahead during the men's portion. But as we got down to the final athlete, Jessica Kalagian put in a phenomenal effort. Coming off of the wall first, put Justice ahead of training Think Tank. Finishing the sandbags, put her ahead of the rest of the field as well in the previous heat. And you can see the excitement from Fermi and company pumped for their Mayhem Justice team. Looking like they've uh, locked up a game spot. It's unbelievable what the Mayhem crew has been able to accomplish here. This is the third team really in the tier for that gym. And they have a very, very good chance, looks like, of making it to the CrossFit Games. The crew from CrossFit CLT, also known as the Grit House, you know, a team that was just on the outside looking in last year, ninth at the Granite Games, come back, another year training. Better, better than ever, now they're going to the games. Look at overtake team density. Came in in fourth place overall into that event. They look to stay inside the top five. You heard from Marco Coppola in the, after the previous event, nothing less than a game spot would be satisfaction for them. And it's looking like they did enough. Well, barring anything totally unforeseen, the top five going in should be the top five going out. The order may have changed slightly, but Training Think Tank needed to knock off at least Mayhem Justice to get in, and they put up a great fight, but just did not have enough in the tank. And nothing against Training Think Tank. They did a great job all weekend long. They hung in tough, and, you know, a team that was at the games last year, experienced individuals on their team. Just how the sport goes sometimes. There is eighth day cross at black. Once again, a happy birthday to the man on the left, Michael Schaefer. Not a bad way to spend your birthday, possibly qualifying for the CrossFit Games. For possibly for a second straight year, too, after they qualified out of Granite Games as well. They were a top 15 team last year. We're going to step aside for just a second. But stay with us when we come back. We will have the official announcement of the five teams heading to Madison, Wisconsin, and the CrossFit Games.
What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows, no bull. It's super important to have a baseline level of where you're at. Being able to have data at your fingertips is just a great way to improve your overall life and health. The at-home thorn tests are just an amazing tool. You can have some tangible evidence as to here's what's going on in your system. It's looking at the body as a whole and trying to fix different systems that will then contribute to overall health. Inside the Knoxville Civic Coliseum is Rich Froning and Sam Cornwaye. Andrea Nissler and Taylor Williamson have just finished winning their sixth straight event. Heading back to the CrossFit Games, the question is who will be joining them? CrossFit CLT solidly in second place. Looking like they will be there as will overtake team density. Having a great day three to get themselves inside the top five. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing your five team representatives from the inaugural syndicate crowd that will represent in Madison, Wisconsin at the Noble CrossFit Games. Starting in first place with a clean sweep on the weekend, six first place finishes. CrossFit May Ham Frida. In second place with 520 points, CrossFit C L T. Finishing in third place with 470 points, CrossFit Overtake Team Density. <laughs> Taking the fourth team spot to the No Bull CrossFit Games with 465 points, 
Eighth Day CrossFit Black. Okay, and finally, the final team headed to the Noble CrossFit Games with 465 points, CrossFit Mayhem Justin. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, loud and proud for your five teams, head to the Noble CrossFit Games, Mayhem Freedom, CrossFit CLT, Team Density, Eighth Day CrossFit Black, and CrossFit Mayhem Justice. How all the... Two teams from CrossFit Mayhem heading to the games, and you saw earlier a class move from Mike McGoldrick walking over and congratulating the teams that are going to the CrossFit games. Rich Brony over there talking to training think tank a little bit. And when you get to watch these announcements, you see the highest of highs, and then you see teams that are in the lowest of lows. But that's sport, right? You know, that's... That's the byproduct of putting yourself out there, being the athletes in the arena. You pour your heart out. You don't always get everything back. And, you know, that's the, the beauty of it. And, you know, hats off to Training Think Tank, Mike and Brandy McGoldrick, Mia Janelli, the whole crew. They're a great team. They're a games caliber team. And sometimes it just doesn't fall your way. The, this team competition was incredibly consistent. You know, amongst the top, Six teams, only two finishes across the weekend in total outside of the top 10. None of them outside of the top 15. And with that level of consistency, you can't have any slip-ups. Everyone has been anticipating the eventual matchup that we're going to get between Mayhem Freedom and Reykjavik. Both of those teams perfect in their respective semifinals. We didn't talk about Mayhem Freedom much in that last event. That's because they were a full lap ahead, you know, in an event that no one finished. So look at the contingency from Cross of Mayhem. Paige Powers there at the top of your screen. The two teams from Mayhem heading to the CrossFit Games, and both of them are with Nikki Brazier. I know I have all the mayhem here right now. All Congratulations to both of you guys. I will start with, with Mayhem Justice. It was a tight point spread going into this final day. What was going through your minds when you knew that you really needed to pull it through in the end there to make up that small gap? Um, a whole lot of stress. Okay. I'd be lying if I said otherwise. Okay. Well, given the fact that you did go ahead and succeed and you're across the aisle from some of your training mates, your teammates, what does this mean to you to be going to the games? Uh, I mean, we worked really hard, so I mean, it means, it means everything. Um, I told Rich I, I didn't want to embarrass him. I didn't want to let him down. Coming from a Mayhem team, sure. you know, I feel like the expectation's high, so it, I mean, it's really cool to live up to it. Yeah. yeah. And the expectation is high. I mean, a clean sweep all weekend, six for six. I know that the goal is always to go to the games, but is part of the goal also to win every single event? I mean, going into the weekend, yeah, we want to win every event. But um, if I'm being 100% honest, I didn't watch one rep after I finished of the girls, as bad as that sounds, because I was watching them. I was more stressed for that than I was. I mean, I knew that they were going to take care of business. I knew you guys would do really well, but I really wanted you guys to make it. So super proud of them, the effort they put in. Super proud of our team, too. But uh, that was fun. It was fun to watch. Good job, guys. Two teams here, one more team also in another semifinal. You have so many competitors in this season. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to see all the people that you trained with really going out there and giving it a shot? Yeah, I mean, we suffer, and you watch the sacrifice that everybody goes in, in, day in, and day out. And so uh, to see the, the sacrifice pay off and watch these guys uh, succeed, is, it's, it's pretty fun, special.
Now, given your experience, there are rumors every year. Is it going to be your last team event? Are you going to change over back into an individual aspect, a master's division? What are your plans this season? Uh, win the CrossFit Games. And go from there. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Here are your final standings after six events. Rich Froning and Mayhem Freedom, they are perfect. 600 out of a possible 600 points. Cross at CLT, they are above the 500 point mark as they sit in second place. Overtake Team Density by five points <laughs> over eight. They cross at Black and Mayhem Justice. And then the final deficit between Mayhem Justice and Triple T cross with 35 points. I think Mayhem is going to have 30 RVs at the campground <laughs> in Madison. Yeah, they book are, your spot now. <laughs> they already had 20 and, you know, add another team to the mix. They're going to own that real estate. Congratulations to the five teams heading to the CrossFit Games, and congratulations to all the teams that competed here at the Syndicate Crown. Froning and company, six for six. Two teams from Mayhem headed to the Games. And a fantastic finish here at the Syndicate Crown to the team competition. For all the leaderboards and to stay up to date on all the competitions going on around the world, head to games.crossfit.com. We are far from done here at the Syndicate Crown. We're going to take a break when we return. The individual competition concludes in Knoxville. The 2022 Syndicate Crown is brought to you by Erosti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. By Rogue, don't weaken. By Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. By Guaranteed Rate, the official mortgage company of the Noble CrossFit Games. And by GoWalk, the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games.
nine, Cody V. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. are off day three of the syndicate crown jackie style you may know the girl workout jackie and that is going to echo through this event kicking off with 1000 meter row 50 thrusters empty barbell which is 35 pounds for our ladies followed by 60 chest -to bar they are then going to trickle back down with 50 more thrusters and culminating with a thousand meter row 15 minutes on the clock, we're going to see how things shake out. Most of these ladies just passed the 200 meter mark. Allison Rolfs from Training Think Tank. Around 300. All these ladies looking controlled. Boys. Several of these ladies going under a two minute pace. Roran Scott pulling in a 158. Allison Rolfs pulling in a 154. She's past the 400 meter mark. So our phenomenal judges have been instructed to raise their hand when 100 meters remain. All of our ladies well past the halfway point. Some of them already passed the 600 meter mark, including but not limited to Holly Henderson, Some of our competitors are approaching 800 meters. Like Allison Rolfs from Training Think Tank in four. Kelsey Schulte from CrossFit Fireside on fire on this rower. Looking for that judge's hand in the air. 
And sure enough, Allison Rolfs from Training Think Tank on her final 100 meters here on Jackie Style. Follow closely, Faith Stewart in lane six. And now Holly Henderson from CrossFit JXN in seven and several other ladies right behind him. As a reminder, 50 thrusters await our athletes when they get off that rower. That's going to be Allison Rolfs from Training Think Tank. Kelsey Schulte from CrossFit Fireside. And several ladies in pursuit. This is going to be quick. I spoke with Dylan earlier. We both anticipate some or all of these ladies going unbroken here. We're going to see if that happens. Our eagle-eyed judges enforcing those standards. It was Allison Rolfs from Training Think Tank in lane four who was the first off the rower, but not by much. Several ladies on her tail. Holly Henderson cycling that barbell very well on these thrusters. Holly Henderson, she's going to drop, shake it out, and pick it right back up. Several of these ladies well past the 30 mark. Roaring Scott trying to hold on. Karis Demai from CrossFit Explode in two. She's going to drop, shake it out, and get right back to it as well. Hand in the air for Holly Henderson in lane seven. We talked about how fast she was on this cycle, and sure enough, she is going to set that bar down and head to that rig. 60 chest of bar to knock out before she can move on. Here comes Roaring Scott right behind her in lane three. And now Cody V from CrossFit SL Fitness in nine. Roaring Scott from CrossFit Boynton Beach. Cycling. Butterflies very efficiently in three. We're going to see if she leads the pack coming off of that rig. So what we're looking for is the first lady to move to that second bar on that A-frame rig. They're going to do 30 on the first bar and 30 chest bar on the second. Holly Henderson, ladies and gentlemen. She is going to eye that second bar. But it is Roaring Scott already digging into her second set of 30 here. She's trying to knock out 60 in total before she can earn more time on that barbell. The race right now. Roaring Scott, Holly Henderson. Here comes Cody V. Faith Stewart as well on that second bar. Karis Demai also on the second bar. Here comes Annalise Moore as well. Several of these ladies quick small sets of three or four maybe five but it is Roaring Scott from Boynton Beach in three not wanting to let go give it up for Roaring Scott ladies and gentlemen the first to dance with that barbell yet again 50 total thrusters here before she can get to this concept two rower Here comes Cody V now. Holding the two spot out of lane nine. She comes out of CrossFit SL Fitness. So you're one, two, and three. Roaring Scott, Cody V, and now 
It looks out of lane six, Faith Stewart holding the three spot. Roran, Cody, and Faith, your top three. That's going to be lanes three, nine, and six. Roran Scott in lane three showed us how committed she was on day one with that heavy barbell and that commitment is continuing to show as she digs in to the second set of 50 thrusters. She's gonna drop, opening the door for Cody V and Faith Stewart and a few more ladies also working on these thrusters. Here comes your athlete of lane four, Allison Rolfs from Training Think Tank. She's on to the barbell. Looking for that judge's hand in the air to let us know who's going to dance with her. Throw her first and sure enough, it looks like it just might be Faith Stewart out of lane six. And sure enough, here she comes. Oh, nope. She says no, she says she has more. Faith Stewart, you talk about integrity. She says no, I've got a few more. And that is how she does it here at the Syndicate Crown. Roran Scott from Boynton Beach on that rower. Roran Scott digging into her row. Faith Stewart. Boosting my faith in the community by saying, no, ma'am, I've got more work to be done before I'm going to move on. Lauren Scott, Boynton Beach, looking very strong in three. Here comes Faith Stewart. Lauren Scott in three. And check out Cody V in nine. She says, don't count me out, MC. I'm in this fight as well. Your top three, Roran Scott, Faye Stewart, and Cody V from SL Fitness. And here comes Holly Henderson from CrossFit JXN. Ladies, you have a little under four minutes to go. Just like we saw on the first row. These ladies are going to push 1,000 meters before they can finish this hellacious event known as Jackie Style. Those judges are going to raise their hand in the air at the 900 meter mark. It was Rower Scott in three who got to the rower first. Faye Stewart behind her and Cody V behind her, but things could shake up. And here comes Allison Ross. She was the first off the rower. We're gonna see if she can make up some ground here as she's doing work in lane four. Three minutes to go, ladies. Roran Scott trying to fend off the other ladies in this heat. She is pulling hard in lane three. Roran Scott, 600 meters down. Faye Stewart flirting with that 500 meter mark. Kelsey Schulte looking strong from CrossFit Fire Science. She's gonna try to get to that rower. Cody V, six and a half in, three and a half to go.
eyes on those judges. We're looking for that hand in the air. It was Roran Scott in three who had the lead. Ladies, you have a little under 90 seconds. Hand in the air for Schulte. Let's get her to that rower. Roran Scott on the tail end of her row. Ladies, you have exactly one minute. And Roran Scott, hand in the air. Cody V, hand in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this race between Roran Scott and Cody V lanes three and nine. Let's get these ladies across the line, 45 seconds. Cody V, Roran Scott. Putting all they can into it. Roran's trying to unbuckle. She's trying to get a bucket. And she will cross the line unofficial 427. And Cody V right there with her. 30 seconds, ladies. Faith Stewart with 20 seconds to go. Her judge's hand in the air. Let's see if we can get her across the line. Ladies, 10 seconds and Faith crosses. Unofficial, 14.51. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and time. Round of applause for our ladies doing work here today. Trying to knock out Jackie style. Individual competition underway here on the third and final day of competition at the Syndicate Crown at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum in Knoxville, Tennessee. Glad you're with us today, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Only two events remain for the individuals. Event number five, Jackie is bad enough by itself. Now we're going to double it, presented by GoWad. 
And we're going to switch the pull-ups to chest to bar. So a thousand meter row, 50 thrusters with an empty barbell. That's what we're used to in Jackie. But instead of 30 regular pull-ups, it's 60 chest to bar. And now you got to go back the way you came with another 50 and 1K on the rower as well with the 15 minute time cap. This is a beefed up version of a classic CrossFit workout. What do you cook it up for our trifecta recipe for success? Oh man, say it with your chest, Sean. <laughs> that is my key to success. Talking to a few athletes, everyone said it came, comes down to those 60 chest to bar pull-ups, making sure that first half of the workout, you set yourself up to do a big chunk, rip through those 60 quick, because after that, it's all just put your head down and pure grit and effort on the backside. 10 women in the second of three heats. In lane number five is Emily White. She started off the competition great. She was actually in second place overall after two events right now in 11th. Yeah, she saw her position slide on day number two, but you know what? This is a great opportunity to maybe get some momentum back. She's just on the bubble. We're going to reseed after this event, so she could find herself in the top 10. We saw three women able to finish this event inside the 15-minute time cap. In that, that first heat, Roran Scott had the top time of 14 minutes, 26.63 seconds. And Jackie Style underway. 1,000 meter row to start things off here. And, you know, we got to a point way back in 2013 when Jackie first showed up as the first event of regionals that year, the, the community was already at a point where you really had to push the road. Most everyone was going to do the, the thrusters unbroken. They're going to do the pull-ups unbroken at a rel relatively fast clip. And it came down to how bad did you want it on the rower. By adding the other half of this to this event, it completely changes this first row. This all becomes about maintenance, getting yourself into a good rhythm. You're putting a good pace into the rower still. You don't want to get too far behind. But making sure that you don't burn out too quick. Sequoia Barrera, who comes in in 14th place overall. Her best finish was in the last event to close out day number two skiing with Karen, when she finished 10th. There's Taylor Sykes from CrossFit 970. Sykes in 13th place overall. Actually has two finishes inside the top 10. She was tied for eighth in the barbell complex to kick off the competition. And then in 2014 regional event five, she finished ninth. Abigail Dobbitt on your screen. 15th place overall. Her best finish of the competition was in 2014 regional event five. She was 11th. Highest she's been on the leaderboard is 15th. One thousand meters that need to be knocked out here on the rower. Then it's fifty thrusters at thirty-five pounds for the women. And then as we talked about going into this event, really the crux of the whole thing, the sixty chest of our pull-ups. Yeah, talking to some athletes beforehand, doing this one in training. A lot of them flirted with disaster on the first half just to kind of see and stress test where and how fast they could go through that first half and still maintain the sets that they wanted to on the chest of bar pull-ups. So Meredith Swindle going through her 1,000 meters. There's Emily White. Madison McElhaney in lane eight, 16th place. Had her best finish at the start of the competition, tied for fifth in the barbell complex with a lift of 225 pounds. Colette Casey down in lane 10. 
Casey in 20th place coming in. Her best finish was 16th place. Did that twice so far. Regional event five in skiing with Karen. And just to highlight the difference in pacing between, you know, normal Jackie and this Jackie, back in 2013, a lot of the women on the row got off at about 345. And even though, you know, the field as a whole is much fitter, they're getting off about 10 seconds later than they did way back then. About five seconds per average on that 500 meter pacing number that you used to see in on the, the rower. 50 thrusters now at 35 pounds. Meredith Swindle in the white shorts and Sequoia Barrera in the black were among the first women to the barbell. After this, it's a 60 chest bar pull up. They'll do 30 on one bar. They'll move forward, do 30 on the next bar. Swindle 12th overall coming into this event. Abigail Domit in lane three. Out of Lone Star CrossFit. And so far, no one has put her barbell down on this first set of 50 thrusters. I've had a couple women rest so far, but Meredith Swindle looking to go unbroken. Sequoia Barrera is done. She'll be the first woman to the pull-up bar along with Meredith Swindle. Then down in lane number one, Maddie Jones, Emily White now moving to the pull-up bar. 60 chest bar pull-ups, 30 on this first bar, and then they'll move forward and complete 30 on the second one. Only three women in heat number one were able to complete this event inside the 15-minute time cap. Top three women on the screen right now. Colette Casey down in lane 10 on the right side of your screen onto her first set of 30 chest bar pull-ups. And Swindle ripped off a set of 20 there. Thirty reps down for Meredith Swindle, and you get kind of the forced break here at the thirty mark, having to switch pull-up bars. It's something these athletes need to keep in mind when they're planning their sets. Swindle is the only woman who is on her back half of the sixty. Now Sequoia Barrera joining her on that second pull-up bar. Barrera out across at Yucca Valley. Cole Casey's battling with Sequoia Barrera for second place right now. Meredith Swindle is in the lead. Barrera on the right in the all black, trying to catch up with Meredith Swindle. After this, 50 more thrusters at 35 pounds and then a final 1,000 meter row. And it's impressive that Cole Casey doesn't have any grips on. She's, I believe she's the only athlete on the floor without hand protection. She must have tremendous amount of faith in her grip strength because remember, we still have some pulling later on with those ring muscle-ups and usually, you know, hand protection is a high priority. Colette Casey, a Masters athlete, 36 years old here competing in a semifinal. Meredith Swindle, meanwhile, has moved on to her second and final set of 50 thrusters and now Sequoia Barrera is done with her pull-ups, as is Maddie Jones down in lane number one. Maddie Jones, 19th place overall. She's finished 12th twice. Her best finishes of the competition. First one came in Oregon Trail, the second event of the Syndicate Crown, and the second one came in the very next event, Regional Event 5. Uh, 
Scotty Jones representing the Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida. Ah, oh, your former home. Spent many a day working out at Crucible CrossFit there. It's a very good CrossFit community down there in, in Jacksonville. Meredith Swindle on the right is your leader. Colette Casey, meanwhile, taking breaks at the top, not putting the barbell down. She has a great pace going on the second set of 50. I like that. Don't have the barbell in that front rack position to obstruct your breathing a little bit. Even with the empty barbell, just keeping it overhead, keeping that chest nice and open to try and fill those lungs up. There to swindle into her final five reps. She is the only athlete with a judge's hand in the air. Final rep for her, and Swindle will move back to the thrower for her final 1,000 meters. Roran Scott has the time to beat 1426.63 seconds. I mean, at that point, she would basically have to row, to row a 215 average on the, per 500 to beat Roran Scott. I think at this stage, most of these athletes would have that in the bag. Colette Casey moving on to the rower, just behind Maddie Jones. <laughs> Abigail Domit is onto the rower at the far end of the floor in the white headband. Taylor Sykes moving on to the rower as well, as is Paulina Haro. See, little eyes closed action on the rower. Sometimes you don't even want to see the screen. You know you're going to be there for a while. It's easier just to close your eyes, focus on your breathing, kind of find your zen, if you will. And Paulina Haro is the next athlete in. She had a great start to the competition. But one of the athletes from Mexico here who is competing, she won the barbell complex, tied for first with a lift of 245 pounds. But since then, she has yet to finish higher than 17. Meredith Swindle on the left side of your screen was the first woman to the rower. And she's, you know, 20 points back at 10th and 12th. And if she has a good finish here and gets some help, she could end up in the top heat. Nicolette Casey, who started off with a pretty fast pace on the rower, now gutting through each pull here. So less than three minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Yeah, she's in the pain cave right now. <laughs> and now about two minutes to go before we hit Roran Scott's top time. You can look at the difference between her and Meredith Swindle. Swindle sitting nice and tall, good posture, good leg drive. That handle stays nice and smooth, a relatively low wobble in the chain going back. Good, efficient pulls. She's got about 700 meters down. 300 to go for Meredith Swindle, and she has a minute 26 to do it. And at that pace, she's going to finish right around 14.05, 14.04. Maybe a little bit faster if she tries to pour it on during that last 150 to 100. Only three women finished this event inside the time cap in the first heat. Meredith Swindle looking to set the new time to beat heading into the third and final heat here in event five. Only one event remains after this for the individuals. Yeah. 
hand in the air from Meredith Swindle. The final 100 meters for her. Swindle is done, and Meredith Swindle will take the heat and set the new top mark. 14.06.97 seconds. Now, Maddie Jones with the judge's hand in the air, and also Colette Casey at the far end of the floor. This is the battle for second in the heat. Hand in the air also in lane four. For Taylor Sykes, Maddie Jones is in, and she will take second place in the heat. Here comes Colette Casey. She is across. 20 seconds left. Taylor Sykes is done. She will make it in. More hands in the air here in the final seconds. 10 seconds remaining. Domit's going to make it in. Haro. I think may have gotten there. Have to wait for her official score. She may not have made it across the finish line in time, but Meredith Swindle has the time to beat 1406.97 seconds. Haro did not get across the finish line in time. Six women in that heat finish inside the time cap. Meredith Swindle with the top time, 1406.97 seconds. Quick break. We'll be back with the final heat of Event 5 here at the Syndicate Crown. Ready for the final heat of event five here for the women at the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee. Thanks for being with us on the Sunday, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Nikki Brazier has us covered down on the competition floor. Your overall standings after four events, Gabby McClellan. If you saw that coming, you were probably related to her. She has a four-point lead over Alexis Raptus. Haley Adams has worked her way all the way up into the third position. Paige Semenza and Christine Kohlenbrander rounding out the top five, but Kohlenbrander only has a two-point lead on Ariel Lowen, and just 29 points separate second from sixth. Event five presented by Go One. We're not going to do Jackie just once. We're going to do it twice. And, oh, by the way, here's some chest of our pull-ups <laughs> to enjoy. Well, just a twist on a classic CrossFit benchmark. 1,000-meter row, 50 thrusters with the empty bar. We're used to that in Jackie, but now instead of 30 regular pull-ups, we're doing 60 chest-to-bar pull-ups with a mandated break at 30 for the turnaround point. Then you go back the way you came with 50 more thrusters and another 1K row to finish. 
recipe for success presented by Trifecta. Did you add anything to this? Uh, you know, I'm just going to expand upon it, right? I said, say it with your chest. It all comes down to the chest of our pull-ups and setting yourself up to rip off big sets and get out in front coming off of that implement. And I think with the mandated rest at the 30 rep mark, I think we're going to see some athletes take advantage of that rather than breaking sooner and maybe go for some big sets. And we didn't see much position change after that part of the workout. Let's go down to the competition floor. That's where Nikki Brazer standing by. Hey, we saw skiing with Karen yesterday. We've got Jackie's style here today. A little bit of a theme going, as you guys mentioned, with the classic CrossFit workouts. The event organizers wanted to have that nod to the history of CrossFit, but also to the evolution of the sport. So the pyramid style version of this event means that we end again with a row, but a much bigger sprint than you'll see in a regular Jackie. Here are the 10 women in this third and final heat. Gabby McClellan, your overall leader, will be in lane five. And Ariel Lowen, who is looking to work her way into the top five, will be in lane six. Christine Kohlenbrander right now in fifth place, but only by two points. Familiar territory for Kohlenbrander, who missed out by one spot last year, but she's in a qualifying spot now. Two points separate her and Ariel Lowen. Both had mistakes yesterday. Colin Brander on the legless rug climb. Lowen with moving her chest piece that cost her at least one placing on the leaderboard. So it's going to be tough. Who can have a relatively clean run today? Now that no rep for Colin Brander yesterday uh, during the legless event cost her about 40 points in the overall standings. Colin Brander. Best finish was in the last event. Skiing with Karen, she finished fifth. Haley Adams, meanwhile, has just been rocketing up the leaderboard. She started with her worst finish of the weekend. She was 23rd overall. After event two, she moved to 11th, then she was up to fourth, and now in third. And she looks, she could not look less interested with this one K row. Just kind of glancing around, just being like, all right, guys, do I really got to do this? Let's, let's get this thing moving. Haley Adams is 21 years old, looking for her seventh CrossFit Games appearance. Fourteen oh six point nine seven seconds is the time to beat. That belongs to Meredith Swindle. Only nine women so far have been able to finish this event inside the 15-minute time gap. There is Paige Semenza. Semenza has been inside the top 10 the entire competition. Best finish is fourth in 2014 regional event five. That's Gabby McClellan, your overall leader. And after day one at semifinal events, you see someone in lead after two. You, that's nice. Can you stay there? You have yes, my curiosity, right? She's legit. Now you have my attention after day two. And a member of our U.S. Space Force. I know. Space Force Guardian? Yes. If we, if the movie Independence Day actually comes true, we know who to call. But Gabby can't, we, really we can't give Gabby enough credit. You know, day one, a lot of high power output movements. Day two, very different. We start mixing in the skill with the legless rope climbs. We have a long, grindy workout and skiing with Karen. She's in, top, in the top 10 in bowl. Nice broader consistency across the weekend so far and she has really stood to the test with some very very fit individuals in this top heat. Alexis Raptus comes in in second place overall. She's only four points back of McClellan. Raptus after finishing tied for 12th in the Barbell Complex has gotten three straight finishes inside the top five and her best one came in skiing with Karen when she tied for third. And, you know, after a near miss at the West Coast last year, she has been a woman on a mission. Seventh worldwide in the Open, second in individual quarterfinals in North America. Comes in as the top-ranked athlete, and really just her demeanor and poise throughout the weekend is that of an athlete that knows she's games caliber and expects to come out and perform. Christine Colbrand, who right now sits in fifth place overall, only by two points ahead of Ariel Lowen. She tied for first to open up the competition in the barbell complex with a lift of 245 pounds. She and Paulina Haro did that. 
But then in regional event five, the third event of the competition, she finished 14th after a costly no rep in the final round. And judges' hands starting to go in the air as Gabby McClellan is off of the rower. And at the far end, Christine Best is also done, as is Haley Adams. Fifty thrusters here at 35 pounds. And I mentioned in the previous heat, back when we saw Jackie in 2013, the leading athletes with only having to do one half in regular pull-ups were off the rower about 345, maybe 350. Most of these athletes got off around the same time, so showcasing the fitness level that and how it's improved, being able to basically row the same pace as athletes, you know, seven, eight years ago with twice the work in front of them. Christine Colebrander is in the yellow. She's in lane number three. Ariel Lowen is down in lane number eight. Take a look at Haley Adams going through her thrusters. The Colebrander's just got to keep an eye on Ariel Lowen. There's Christine Best. Best comes in in 10th place overall. Coming off a fourth place finish in skiing with Karen. There is Ariel Lowen, who is in sixth place right now, two points back of Christine Kohlenbrander. Hand in the air for Haley Adams. And Alexis Raptis and Ariel Lowen. Adams is going to be first to the pull up bar. You got to watch Christy Ermo O'Connell in lane two. She made up a ton of ground on the thrusters. You know, upper body pulling is one of her strong shoots. A rock climber. Got tremendous grip strength. And now Christine Kohlenbrander just getting to the pull-up bar to start her first set of 30 chest to bars. Haley Adams taking a break. Adams looking to overtake McClellan for the top spot in the standings. Only 10 points back. Christy Aramo O'Connell is in seventh place overall. She's trying to get herself into the top five here. And you got to see her pace on the thruster. She was incredibly aggressive on that first set of 50. And she's pulled into the lead through these chest to bar pull ups. If she can maintain that aggressive pace, pulling the bar down into the rack and the thrusters. That's the sense of urgency you want to see from an athlete outside of the top five trying to make a move on Sunday. Aramo O'Connell, Haley Adams, Alexis Raptis, Pace Semenza, and Ariel Lone and Christine Best are all on to their second set of 30. Now Christine Kohlenbrander has made it there as well. Haley Adams is your leader right now in the heat. Time to beat. Belongs to Meredith Swindle, 1406.97 seconds. Now Christy Aramo O'Connell is in front, back to the barbell for her second set of 50 thrusters. And she is already flying through these. Aramo O'Connell is 17 points back on Colin Brander for fifth place. Here comes Haley Adams. And back when we saw Jackie in 2013, the best time worldwide, Penina Ladera, 6.04. And at the halfway mark, Christy Aramo O'Connell was right around that base. Unbelievable. With yeah. chest of our pull-ups, that's insane. There are your standings, Ariel Lowen. Two points back of Christine Cohen, Bradley, Christine Aramo O'Connell. Christy Aramo O'Connell, pardon me. 17 points out. If Aramo O'Connell were to win this event, she pick up 100 points. She would need Colin Brander to finish six or lower to make up that deficit. Five remaining for Christy Aramo O'Connor. And now she is on to the rower first. 
Arimo O'Connell has been making a charge up the leaderboard. She started in 12th and dropped to 19th, but since then she's been creeping up. She shaved 11 spots off of that, moved up to 8th, then into 7th, and now looking to punch into the top 5 with this effort. And she is absolutely blitzing this event. She's almost a, a minute 40 ahead of the previous time getting to the rower set by Meredith Swindle. Haley Adams on to the rower. Swindle got to the rower at about 10 minutes. Here comes Paige Semenza. Semenza looking to stick around inside the top five. She currently sits in fourth place overall. And Chrissy Aram O'Connell taking a look to her left. Now Meredith Swindle, or pardon me, Christine Kohlenbrander on to the rower. That's big because she's ahead of Ariel Lowen right now. Now Alexis Raptus is on to the rower. Ariel Lowen's judge has yet to put his hand in the air on the second set of 50, so this is big for Colin Brander. Now five reps remaining for Ariel Lowen. Time to beat Meredith Swindle, 1406.97 seconds. Here comes Ariel Lowen. But Christine Colin Brander got Alexis Raptus between herself and Ariel Lowen. Christine Best is also on the rower. And and you can see in the background, in the back right, Gabby McClellan, the only athlete still on the thruster bar. She set the bar down during that second set of 50. McClellan only had a 31-point lead on Colin Brander for first place. And only 33 over Lowen, so she's not safe either. McClellan and Sulik are the only two athletes on the thrusters. And remember, six women in the prior heats finished inside the time cap. And their times could play a big role in determining who winds up in the top five. McClellan resting with the barbell on her back. I don't think I've ever seen that. At least on Jackie. Some, maybe the grip, maybe the forearms, something's off. Just trying to give herself a quick little break. The, the point spread from first to 10th is 36 points. And she's in 10th place in this heat right now. We can see a huge swing on the leaderboard. Here comes McClellan to the rower. She has eight women in front of her right now in the heat. Christy Aramo O'Connell is your leader. And Babby McClellan not only in danger of losing the top spot, but possibly falling out of the top five. Christy Aramo O'Connell approaching the 700 meter mark. Has a little less than three minutes to go before we hit Meredith Swindle's top time. And Swindle got to the rower before McClellan, too, so that's another athlete factoring into this points equation. Christine Kohlenbrander is in the yellow, and she was able to get to the rower ahead of Ariel Lowen, the woman right behind her in the overall standing, so looking to put a little distance between herself and Lowen for that fifth and final spot. And this feels eerily similar to the last chance qualifier of last year, just the live version. Aramo O'Connell didn't have the best day one of that competition, really needed it to come out strong in day two. Won both of those events to catapult her back to the games and, you know, needing, needing a big performance on day three here. Final 100 for Christy Aramo O'Connell. 100 points would go a long way. Judges hand in the air for Haley Adams as well. And Aramo O'Connell is going to win the event. 100 points for Christy Aramo O'Connell. Now Haley Adams is done. Adams looking to be the overall leader heading into the sixth and final event after starting the competition in 23rd. And here comes Paige Semenza, who is the third woman to the rower. Hand in the air at the same time for her and Alexis Raptus. And Christine Kohlenbrander's judge's hand is in the air as well. A third place overall in the event is still up for grabs. And it's going to be Christine Kohlenbrander. 
Semenza and Raptus go barreling over the finish. Raptus gets the best of Semenza. 13 minutes, 12 seconds, point three one for Raptus. Paige Semenza came in at 13, 14. Now best is across. Best is going to get sixth place in the event. And that's huge for Christine Best. She was in 10th, trying to stay in that top heat. That finish should keep her there. Now, Ariel Lowen is in. Lowen was trying to catch Christine Cohenbrander. That deficit's going to get bigger. Lowen finishes in seventh place. That's going to be worth 76 points. Christine Cohenbrander took third. She'll get 92, so 16 points now added to that deficit as Callior is in. And if there's any consolation for Ariel Lowen right now, it's that Gabby McClellan is still on the competition floor. She was only 33 points back. And less than a minute to go here. About 30 seconds left, and McClellan's in her final 100 meters. Eight women so far in this heat of finish, which means 14 total have finished the event. McClellan's going to come in, and she gets it inside the time cap. And five athletes from that previous heat beat McClellan's time. She finishes 14th. That'll give her 49 points, which means Lowen is going to pick up. Twenty-seven, and she was only 33 back. So Gabby McClellan could find herself in fifth place going into the final event. We'll have to see how it shakes out. But it looks like Chrissy Aramo O'Connell is going to move into the top five. It's just a matter of who comes out. What an effort from Christine Kohlenbrander. As Ariel Lowen heads off the competition floor. But Christine Kohlenbrander found herself in a deficit early on, but was able to make that up late in the event and finish in third place. But Christy Aramo O'Connell just dusted this thing. Yeah, she took control during the chest of bar pull-ups. Some incredibly fast thrusters. And by the time she got to the back half of this workout, She'd started to put some distance between her and even Haley Adams in second. She's the first athlete to the rower, and it was all smooth sailing from there. And we got to see Gabby McClellan finally struggle a little bit. Those 50 thrusters really got to her. She was the last athlete in the heat to get to the rower. And unfortunately for our leader through the first two days, it's looking like she might concede that lead because some big time performances came from Christy Aramo O'Connell. Looking like she got her second event win of the weekend. And we'll have to see if it's enough to get her inside the top five. Haley Adams most likely will be her overall leader heading into the sixth and final event. And what a charge up the standings for her. But a great effort from Christy Aramo O'Connell. And she is with Nikki Brazier. Christy, you were rowing like your games ticket was at the end of that 1,000-meter row. What was going through your mind and your body in that moment? Um, that I'll be okay in five minutes, so just keep working, keep working. The pain will go away. Sure. And that the games ticket is kind of on the other side of that row. With a point spread this close, how do you keep your nerves down and execute to your plans? I try not to look at the point spread. Um, I don't like to know. And we have game plans, and the goal is just to go out and execute the way that I know how. And if I do that, hopefully things will fall where I want them to be. Okay, and with one event left, what is that game plan? Um, full send. Okay. Right. Congrats, great job. Thank you. Here are your event results. Christy Aramo O'Connell with her second event win, her second in three events here. 1231.29 seconds. Haley Adams takes second, and she will most likely be our overall leader. Big performance from Christine Kohlenbrander as she looks to hang on to a spot inside the top five. Alexis Raptus and Paige Semenza.
rounding out the top five spots. We're going to take a break. Men are coming up next. Tommy and I will be up in heat number two. Stay with us, everybody, here at the Syndicate Crown. The 2022 Syndicate Crown is brought to you by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. By Arosti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. By O2, the official recovery drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. And by the U.S. Army. Know your army. our Warriors for the Syndicate floor. In lane two, Mike McDonald. In three, Raymond Romantic. In four, Dex Hopkins. 
In five, Mike Evans. In six, Ben Smith. In seven, Vincent Azua. In eight, Tristan Majorano. And in nine, Daniel Sterling. We call that pink short power. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. And these fellas are off tackling, Jackie style. 1,000 meters on that concept to row erg, followed by 50 thrusters at 45 pounds, then 60 total chest to bar, and back down that ladder for 50 thrusters, culminating in 1,000 meters on the rower yet again. 15 minute time cap. We're gonna see what happens. Mike Evans with a blazing pace right now. Looks like he has chosen to come out of the gates hot. Our fellas passed the 250 mark. Lane six is Ben Smith, the 2015's fittest man on earth, putting a show here today. Mike Evans still leading the charge for these fellows out of lane five. He has just crossed the 500 meter mark. Our judges will throw their hand in the air when there are 100 meters remaining. Tristan passed the 500 meter mark and several other fellows right behind him, but it is Mike Evans who just passed the 600 meter mark. Dex Hopkins, looking solid in four. He passes 600. As Mike Evans passes 700. Tristan Majorano, past the 700 mark. Ben Smith as well. Here comes Vincent Azua. Mike Evans. Past 800, looking for that judge's hand in the air for him. CrossFit XD, ladies and gentlemen, in the house on lane five, represented by Mike Evans. Fewer than 100 meters to go for him. Three minutes in, gentlemen, plenty of time on the clock.
Raymond Romanic, hand in the air. Dex Hopkins, Ben Smith, and several other men. But it is CrossFit XD's Mike Evans who steps to that barbell first. Here comes Romantic behind Evans and a cascade of fellows follow suit. Can Mike Evans hold this lead? Mike Evans grabbed the barbell first. He has not put it down yet. Romantic was right behind him. He too has continued to hold on to that barbell. Let's go, crowd. Let them know you're out there. It's okay. Our eagle eye judges looking for two things. That depth and that extension at the top. Mike Evans. Judge his hand in the air. He's going to go unbroken. CrossFit XD, ladies and gentlemen. Dex Hopkins, Ben Smith, Romantic, several other fellas choosing the unbroken route, but it is Mike Evans trying to push the pace and the lead on the field as he digs in to those 30 chest to bar for moving on to that next bar for another 30, 60 total for these fellas. Dex Hopkins comes down. Romantic drops. Several fellas still trying to get them knocked out. Mike Evans drops. Sterling drops. Ben Smith still going, ladies and gentlemen. And Ben Smith will knock out his 30, but Mike Evans is there with him. Your top two at the moment. And Mike Evans, the first of these Warriors to dig into the second set of 30 chest -a bar And here comes Mike McDonald in two, Romantic in three, and Ben Smith in six. Woo! Romantic drops, McDonald drops. Dex drops, Mike Evans still going. Looking for that judge's hand in the air yet again. Tristan Majorano working on his chest -to bar as well. He's coming out of lane eight. So Ben Smith made up a huge deficit on the first set of 30 chest -to bar. But Mike Evans not wanting to let that lead go. He's at 24 chest -to bar. Ben Smith, three more to go for him. And he has now assumed the lead. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ben Smith. 50 thrusters for Mr. Smith. He's gonna pick it up and lock it out. He's got two, now three. But as we've seen for the entire competition, these fellas are competing against the subsequent heats as well. There's no reason to slow down now. So these fellas went unbroken the first time. They had that barbell in their hands. We're gonna see if they can hold that strategy. Ben Smith has not dropped it yet, and he is cycling very well. Over there in lane six, coming out of CrossFit Krypton.
Look at Ben Smith go. I think he's getting faster, ladies and gentlemen. Ben Smith, that is 40 unbroken so far. We're looking for that judge's hand in the air, and there it goes. Five more thrusters for Mr. Ben Smith. CrossFit Krypton in the house, Knoxville. Ben Smith alone on that rower. It was Mike Evans who came out the gates hot, but Ben did a sneak attack. Here comes Mike McDonald ripping a shirt off. He's going to give Ben Smith a run for his money on a lane two. Smith. McDonald. And now, Evans, your top three. Here comes Mike Evans from CrossFit XD. Ocean State in the house as well. Ben Smith. Mike McDonald. Mike Evans. Myrano. Here comes Sterling in nine. Gentlemen, you have five minutes remaining. It was Ben Smith in lane six who got to that rower first. He currently sits at 400 meters. It was McDonald in lane two who followed suit behind him giving chase he is at the 300 meter mark now mike evans 240. ben smith from crossfit krypton continuing to lead the charge in lane six he passes 550 meters McDonald, 441. Evans, 390. Ben Smith, 600. Ben Smith, again, I think is going faster than when he started. Sterling, 400. Majorano from Ocean State, 500. But Ben Smith is uncatchable, ladies and gentlemen. 750 meters for 2015's fittest man on earth. McDonald, 650. Ben Smith, ladies and gentlemen, seconds away from having his judge's hand in the air. And there it is, Ben Smith, 100 meters to go. With fewer than three minutes remaining, McDonald, 200 meters to go. Evans, 250 to go. Knoxville. Give it up for the one and only Ben Smith. He finishes unofficial 1229. The race for the two spot is underway, and it looks like McDonald is going to try to grab that by the horns. 930 for him in lane two. Several fellas close. Can McDonald hold on? Mike Evans, Byerano. Look how close this is, ladies and gentlemen. McDonald gets across the line, but Evans and Byerano. And Evans will get across the line, followed closely by Byerano in eight.
And in the air for Romantic and Sterling. Gentlemen, you've got 90 seconds. Dex Hopkins. And in the air out of lane four. Sterling's across the line. Romantic across the line. Hopkins on official 1347 for him. Keep that energy going, ladies and gentlemen. Fellas, you have a little over one minute. Azua from IMT CrossFit doing work out of lane seven. Let's welcome Mr. Azula across that line, and they will all finish well under that 15-minute time cap. Check, check. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all ready for that next heat? Everybody okay out there? Can you hear me? Let's see how these guys are doing over here. Hey guys, you doing okay? Individual action continues here at the Syndicate Crown, the final day of competition here at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum in Knoxville, Tennessee. Glad you're with us, everybody. Sean Woodland and Tommy Marquez up here in the booth, and it's Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor. We are through the first of three heats in Jackie style, presented 
by Gowan. Yeah, just a beefed up version of the classic CrossFit benchmark Jackie. A thousand meter row, 50 thrusters with the empty barbell. That's what's familiar. But now we have 60 chest to bar pull ups broken into 30 rep sections. And then you actually got to go back and do another 50 thrusters and another thousand meter row, effectively doubling the total work that you're used to. What are you cooking up for the trifecta recipe for success? Well, you know, I said it earlier, Sean, you gotta say it with your chest, Kev. And it, really, we have yet to see an athlete come off of the chest to bar pull-ups in the lead and not be able to hold on to that lead. So it all centers around making sure you can get to those chest to bars and rip off big sets to hopefully pull out in front. Well, every athlete in heat number one was able to finish this event inside the 15 minute time cap. 10 more athletes to go here in the second of three heats. Right in the middle of the floor is Hal Fisher, who comes in in 11th place overall. He's only one point out of 10th. Yep, he could push himself into the final heat. We're going to reseed after this event, so you want to be with the top guys. He's kind of had a back and forth weekend, you know, 17th, 23rd, but also an eighth and a fifth. So if he has another strong finish here, we could see him with the big boys. Going down to the chalk bucket for the last time. Golden gold bomb there. Scott Tetlow in this heat. Spencer Airy absolutely smoked the legless event yesterday. Got an event win. And the fastest time that we have seen so far on that event at 245 flats. I'm Mark Hutchinson getting ready for this initial 1,000 meter row. The time to beat belongs to Ben Smith. 12 minutes. 29.39 seconds in heat number one. His brother Alec in the middle of your screen, no shirt. He's also in this second of three heats. You know, Sean, back when we first saw Jackie in CrossFit competition, CrossFit Games competition was in 2013. And then Jason Kalipa had the fastest time of any men when we, it was just the normal Jackie at 5.04. Brings back some fun memories of him basically making his rower skip <laughs> backwards. He was pulling so hard. He rode that first 1K in just under 310. When you think back to the 2014 regional in San Jose where I think Julie Boucher had to put her foot on the back of the rower to keep it from moving so he could get everything he could out of that pull. Jason Kalipa can actually move a stationary rower. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect them to hold a similar pace on the row in this first 1K. Although we did see some women in this event row a similar 1K time to what we saw way back in 2013. Very deliberate row technique from Brian Wynn to the chest. Immediately get those arms extended back out. Start the return to the handle. Brian Wynn, the man on the left side of the screen in the blue shirt and red shorts. Wynn coming in in 15th place overall. His best performance by far was a fourth place in 2014 Regional Event 5. That's Matthias Porter in lane 7. Porter in 14th place overall. His best finish also in 2014 Regional Event 5 when he took 10th with a time of 259.23 seconds. You know, Porter out of CrossFit Krypton. We just saw Ben Smith do well in this event. Maybe trying to carry the gym flag a little bit here in Heat, heat 2. Down in lane 10 is Mark Hutchinson. Former regional athlete out of the Atlantic Regional. Competed there as an individual and also on a team. Currently 20th place overall best finish was in the opening event. He tied for 12th in the barbell complex with a lift of 315 pounds. Hutchinson, part of a massive, massive mayhem athlete crew here at semifinals. Down in lane one, other end of the floor, closest to the camera is Roland Goldbaum. He started off the competition in third place overall after taking third in event number one, a 340 pound lift in the barbell complex, but the closest he's come to that finish after that was a 15th in 2014 Regional Event 5. Hands starting to go in the air for the judges here as these athletes put the 
final meters onto their 1,000 meter row. Scott Tetlow in lane nine is going to be the first man to move to the barbell. Tetlow, Airy, Porter all get into the barbell at about the same time. Now Alex Smith will be the last man off the rower, all 10 men, onto the second part of this event, the 50 barbell thrusters at 45 pounds. And I would expect Tetlow to be one of the first athletes off the thrusters here. He is absolutely moving. Tetlow rifling through these right now. Tetlow 18th place overall. Best finish was in event number two, Oregon Trail. He took 11th. He is just smoking these thrusters. We don't talk about it often, but he is the shortest athlete in the field. Range of motion a little bit smaller, but obviously that coupled with some tremendous fitness. Thrusters are just a movement that stacks up nicely for him. He has only three to go here on this opening set of 50. So Scott <laughs> Tetlow just rifling through those thrusters and he will be the first man onto the pull-up bar, 60 chest to bar pull-ups. They'll do 30 on that first pull-up bar and then 30 on the second. Thought for a second he was gonna go with the old Miko Salo there. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was either gonna do a bar muscle up or do the Miko Salo frog kip. Almost over pulled there, had to reset for a second. <laughs> Evan Rogers in lane six, moving up to the pull-up bar as well. And then down in lane number one, Roldan Goldbaum is on to the pull-ups. See a little bit wider grip from Goldbaum. And now slips off. Good catch. That could have been, could have been scary. And Tetlow's already done with his 30 chest of our time to beat Ben Smith from heat number one, 1229.39. And Tetlow finished that in a, that first half of the workout about 5:29. Remember the fastest time from Jackie back in the day from Kalipo was 5:04, so only about 20, 25 seconds behind him with chest of bars and with having to do double the work. Final three reps for Scott Tetlow. Evan Rogers is also onto his back set of 30, as is Hal Fisher. Brian Wynn is there as well. And Garrett Clark as Tetlow gets into his second set of 50 thrusters. Evan Rogers on the left side of your screen is the man who is in second place behind Tetlow, but Tetlow is sprinting through this event. As I mentioned in our, in our keys to success, we have yet to see an athlete get tracked down in the lead once they leave the pull-up bar. And the way he's moving these thrusters, I don't, I don't think we're going to see that change. Tetlow with an incredible pace here. Mark Hutchinson in the black shirt is now moving to the second bar bar, or second pull-up bar as Evan Rogers is now done along with Hal Fisher. Fisher on the left, Rogers on the right. Spencer Airy in the tan shirt on the right side just picking up the barbell. And Tetlo is going to the rower at 7 minutes 30 seconds. He did those 50 thrusters. He started at 619. He was done at 727. He did those in a minute and 8 seconds. 50 thrusters. And he looks great. You, you can see the, the posture and the, the look on his face. He looks comfortable right now. He doesn't, he's not in that pain cave that we've seen a few of these athletes by the, are in by the time they get to the rower. Tetlow out of finish a strong CrossFit, and that is an apt name for what he is doing right now. 12.29.39 from Ben Smith is the top time, but 
Tetlow could take a water break and come back to the rower and still have a shot at beating that. Evan Rogers and Hal Fisher were in the fight for second along with Spencer Airy. Airy is in the middle of your street on the top in the tan shirt and green shorts going through his thrusters. He's got a pretty good pace going. That's Garrett Clark in lane two. He was also towards the lead pack. And now Evan Rogers getting into the rower. But Scott Tetlow has a huge head start. Here comes Spencer Airy. Rogers, 12th place overall. His last three finishes were all inside the top 10, the 10th and 8th and the 9th. Tetlow almost to the 500 meter mark here and halfway through. You see his strokes per minute in the bottom left hand corner 36. That's pretty high. You know, we mentioned, you know, he's the shortest athlete in the field, benefits him during the thrusters. Unfortunately, to keep that pace high, unless he's putting a huge maximal effort into each pull for him to keep up, it means he's going to have to ha have a higher stroke rate. Now to the 600 meter mark is Scott Tetlow. Hal Fisher into the rower. Mark Hutchinson is also there as well, but everyone is chasing that guy, Scott Tetlow. He's on pace to break 12 minutes. See Nick Uranker in the in the crowd. Cheering on Tetlow. It's good to see Nick here. Cheering on his buddy. Your anchor is a former collegiate kicker who in practice booted a 60 plus field goal. Really? Wow. Had a leg on it. Final 100 meters for Tetlow. Also a decent basketball player. I played pickup with him not, not too long ago. We got to box some people out. Tetlow is done, and he will demolish Ben Smith's time and set the new mark to beat 11, 15.65 for Scott Tetlow. That's Evan Rogers, who's passed the 700 meter mark. Looking to lock up second place in the heat, and if he can get in inside 1249, he'll have second place in the event with one heat to go. It looks like he was just about past the 800 meter mark. He's going to have to pour it on thick here. Next best time after Smith is 1302.53. That belongs to Mike McDonald out of heat number one. Looks like Ben Smith's time is going to stand, but Evan Rogers is in. And his time will be good enough right now for third place in the event 1232.36 seconds. Spencer Airy and Garrett Clark. Airy on the right, Clark is on the left. Airy is in. And Clark right behind him. Airy coming in 12 minutes, 48.40 seconds. Clark, three seconds behind him. Now Brian Wynn closing out his final 1,000 meter row. Man, if you told me, you know, 10 years ago that there'd be athletes basically doing double Jackie 
in the 13 minute range or less. Some even sub 12. Probably wouldn't have believed you. And Mark Hutchinson, who had the early lead, finishing up his row. And he is done. Hutchinson across the finish line. He'll take six in the heat right now, 10th in the event, 1330.08 seconds. Now, Hal Fisher, the man who came in in 11th place overall, finishes up, and Alex Smith is in. Alex Smith with a time of 13 minutes, 46.76 seconds, gives him eighth place in the heat right now, 14th in the event. Matthias Porter is in. At least Golden Goldbaum is the only man left on the floor. Goldbaum is done. And for the second straight heat, every man makes it in inside that 15 minute time cap. But Scott Tetlow crushes event five. 11 minutes, 15.65 seconds. And the middle portion of the event is what did it for this guy. Yeah, everyone in this heat was chasing the top time from Ben Smith last heat. Scott Tetlow came out like a man possessed, one of the first athletes off the roar. He was the first man off of the thrusters, the chest of bars, and the thrusters again. I mean, he was cruising. He beat the top time by over a minute. The first athlete to break 12 in this event. This weekend may not have gone as he's wanted to, but starting day three with a, a win would be huge. Results from heat number two, Tetlo goes sub 12, 11, 15.65 seconds. Evan Rogers will take second, followed by Spencer Airy, Garrett Clark, and Brian Wynn. Two heats down, one heat remains. Overall leaders on the floor when we return to the syndicate crowd. One heat remains for the men in the second to last event for the individuals at the Syndicate Crown here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Thanks for spending your Sunday with us, everybody, wherever you are. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Nikki Brazier is on the competition floor. Here are your overall standings after four events. The top five really separating themselves from the field. Medeiros, Magda, Hopper, Gray Shaver, and Sprague just have to keep it in the fairway in these final two events. Griffin Raleigh needs to make up 54 points on James Sprague over these next two events to get himself inside the top five. Jackie Style presented by Gowad is event number five. And those chest bar pull-ups are just ugly there in the middle. Oh man, we have the 1K bro, we have the empty bar thrusters, we have the pull-ups in the middle, but usually that's where it ends with 30, but we got 60 chest bars and then you gotta go back down the ladder. 
with another 50 thrusters in another 1K row. Seen three heats of women, two heats of men on this one. How, if at all, do you change your recipe for success presented by Trifecta? I mean, it it's, stays with what we've seen in the previous heats. If you can get off the chest to bar pull-ups first, for the most part, it's pretty smooth sailing. You have clean water ahead of you to get to the finish line. And we haven't seen an athlete been, uh, you know, lose that lead in that second half portion. So get there fast. Let's go down to Nikki Brazier. Before the competition started here, the event organizers told me that this is actually their favorite event of the entire competition weekend. And the reason is because this is a twist on a classic CrossFit workout. Jackie, it's a workout that most of us have done before and most of us tackle pretty early on in our CrossFit careers. So that's a way to really connect what's happening here on the competition floor down through the roots of the community, though I doubt any of us want to tackle it with this twist. That would be a no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, you know, you never know. No, we, I do. I'm not going to want to do we, this. We say no. <laughs> and then so, your buddy says, hey, you want to do an awful workout? And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Load Here the wagons. The Let's do this. In this third and final heat, overall leaders will be in the middle of the floor, led by Justin Medeiros in lane number five. He comes in with 352 total points. He has a 46-point lead on Tudor Magda. James Sprague right now is in fifth place, but he has a 54-point lead on Griffin Raleigh right now. Yeah, and he has made a tremendous charge in the last two days. After his 24th place finish in the lift, he's gone first, second, sixth to move himself up into fifth and give himself a little bit of a cushion. And Tudor Magda, second place, just 46 points back of Madeira's. Did not expect to see him inside the top five at this point. You know, he's competed alongside Sprague and even alongside Gray Shaver in the teenage divisions in the past. But, you know, the year he was, he was quote unquote, the man in the 16 to 17 division, the guy to beat. I was 2020. That season got cut short. He didn't really get to have his moment, his final moment in the teenage division. And, you know, two years removed from that, he's getting ready to have a moment here as an individual. 11.15.65 seconds is the time to beat from Scott Tetlow. Justin Medeiros has had a very Justin Medeiros-like competition, pretty consistent throughout. He's only won one event. That was the last one, skiing with Karen, but everything inside the top seven. Yeah, but this is where I think we really see him shine. We saw it start last night in the long event. You know, with a games athlete with experience under your belt and being one of the, the best in the world, as the weekend wears on and, you know, people can't handle the volume as well and see their performance drop, this is where someone like Justin really shines. Jason Hopper, who is one of the last two men to beat Justin Medeiros in a live competition, currently sits in third place, has only finished outside the top ten was in event number three, 2014 regional event number five, where he took 12th. But after that, he finished seventh in skiing with Karen. He has a second in Oregon Trail. And really impressed with the maturity we've seen from Hopper in year two. Everything went basically right as best as it could at the MAC last year. And then, you know, he got roughed up a bit at the games. He'd be the first to tell you that some of those outdoor games level events caught him a little off guard. You know, he's back in year two. You know, maybe he didn't have everything go the, the way he had planned, but he's stayed with the plan. He's been calm and composed and inside the top five pretty much the entire weekend. And you know what? He's going to go back to Madison with a whole head of confidence knowing he, last year wasn't a fluke. Cole Grayshaber is in fourth place, and he's been inside the top seven this entire competition, punched his way into the top five with a second-place finish in skiing with Karen. The resiliency of these young athletes is certainly impressive. Day two, you're in the top five. Gray Shaber in unfamiliar territory in a qualifying spot. He has an 18th in the Lillegas Rogue Climb. Puts him on the bubble. How does he respond? The long event, he comes out charging. He actually was the, the person setting the pace early on. Even though he got caught by Maderos, he finishes second in that event. Solidifies him in fourth. And, uh, man, that's the benefit of these young, young guns having a lot of competition experience from the teenage divisions. And there is James Sprague, who has an event win in Oregon Trail and followed that up with a second place finish 
in 2014 Regional Event 5. That got him into the top five. And then after a sixth place in skiing with Karen, he dropped down to fifth place. But he does have a comfortable lead over the man in sixth, Griffin Raleigh. Cole Grayshaver is the first man to the barbell. Here comes Jason Hopper and James Sprague right behind him, followed by Tudor Magda, Justin Medeiros as well. Rafael Sanson down in lane two in the blue shirt. He's on the left side of your screen, just out of view. Every man now onto the 50 thrusters. And Jason Hopper, third place overall. He's got a three-point lead on Cole Grayshaver for third. Now, Griffin Raleigh is the man who sits in sixth place. He has to make up 54 points on James Sprague over these final two events in order to get himself into the top five. And I like the way he's attacking these thrusters. I mean, given that he's probably the strongest athlete in the field, this thing feels like a paperweight for him, which means he's got to rip that bar down into his squat, really try and reduce his cycle time at this point, he's got a ton of points to make up. And he's got to swing for the fences in both of the events today. And for James Sprague, he just has to hang out close to Griffin Raleigh. It's a different mindset to be in, right? You know, as a young athlete, you're expecting to have to come in and fight for every point, fight through every event. But you're staring at a 50-plus point advantage. And how, can you kind of recalibrate a little bit here and make the smart move? Matt Poulin in lane nine was right with Justin Medeiros in lane five as the two of them got to the pull-up bar just ahead of everyone else. Now for James Sprague to surrender 54 points in one event, if Griffin Raleigh were to win this event, Sprague would have to finish 15th. And we just crossed the 530 mark. Tetlow was already done with his first half of Jackie. So just to kind of keep in mind that pace that he set was absolutely blistering. Given where these athletes are at, they might have to, you know, accept that they're not going to get the event win here. Matt Poulin is on to his second set of 30 along with just about everybody else, but he was the first man to get there. He's in the middle of your screen. And Justin Medeiros in lane five, taking some time to chalk the hands. And Tudor Magda in lane six, now on his haunches, taking a breather. And for the top five men, they just have to avoid a total disaster right now. Matt Poulin is moving on to the thrusters. Poulin in eighth place overall. Time to beat belongs to Scott Tetlow. 11 minutes, 15.65 seconds. And here comes basically everybody else. Justin Medeiros was second to the barbell, followed by Rafael Sanson. But then you have a, the whole pack joining them. This, this might be the closest race on the rower that we've seen thus far. Even the women in the top heat, there was some separation here. But five or six athletes all within a few reps here. There's James Sprague's father, a master's athlete himself. You see Rafael, uh, sorry, Matt Torres, the head coach of, for the Brute Strength Camp down in Naples, where Sprague and a bunch of the young athletes have relocated to form a camp. Jesus, Sprague look. continuing to work here. <laughs> you see, you see his, his dad rocking those 22-inch pythons? <laughs> He's got some good raw materials to work with. And Matt Poulin on to the rower. So Poulin trying to do everything he can to give himself a fighting chance in the last event. And he gets started on his final 1,000 meter row. Griffin Raleigh has the barbell down. He's taking a break and now Justin Medeiros, he will be 
the second man to the rower. And based on when Kulin got on the rower, he'd have to row a, a 3.14 1K to close this out to catch Scott Tetlow. Not sure that's going to happen. Will Morad is onto the rower. James Sprague's family urging him on as Sprague puts his feet into the concept too and now puts his back into these strokes. And remember for Sprague, he's just got to stay close to Griffin Raleigh. And Griffin Raleigh is the last man on the thrusters. Raleigh has yet to finish and now he will get himself on the rower. So Griffin Raleigh is going to have to pull the thousand meter of his life right now. Six minutes left before we hit the 15-minute time cap. Time to beat from Scott Tetlow is in the bottom left-hand part of your screen. And Justin Madera is continuing to be smooth and steady here. He's in first place. He has a 46-point lead on Tudor Magda. And well on his way towards heading back to the CrossFit Games for the third straight time. Cole Gray Shaver, who sits in fourth place, is six points up on James Sprague. We saw we saw Cole talk to him a bit before after checking, and he is built different too. He's got them broad shoulders and a big frame. Seeing him develop the last couple of years. Has been awesome. We saw him at, at the Mayhem Classic in Cookville last year. Just missed out by a couple spots at the Atlas Games. And now in live competition, really a new and improved version of himself. He walked by us and I thought, you could show a movie on that kid's back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tattoo artist's dream right there. And Matt Poulin passed the 700-meter mark. He's cooking. So 11, 15.65 seconds is the top time. There's more than a minute between Tetlow's best mark and Ben Smith's second place time. The 96 points are still up for grabs here. As Tetlow is creeping closer to having 900 meters in the bag. Now Petlow is inside 100 to go. This judge's hand is in the air. No other athlete has his judge's hand in the air right now. So smooth sailing for Matt Poulin. He's not going to beat Scott Tetlow. Tetlow's going to lock up 100 points in the win, but he will finish second in the event. So 96 points for Matt Poulin. That's 11.23.67 seconds. That's great for his chances in, to keep his season alive. He was in eighth and in that last spot for the last chance qualifier. Justin Medeiros' judge's hand is in the air, as is Jason Hoppers and James Sprague. And the families of all the athletes are sitting right there at the finish line. Medeiros is out, Medeiros is through, and he is on his way again to Madison. James Sprague is in, Hopper's in, and Gray Shaver. And just before Gray Shaver, Will Morat snuck in in the far lane, lane 10. But the top five men all doing what they need to do. With one event remaining, so Sprague's lead on Griffin Raleigh for six is going to increase. Sprague is going to finish in fourth place in the event. Jacob Pfaff rowing to try to finish up. So that means Sprague in fourth is going to pick up 88 points, and we'll wait to see where Griffin Raleigh finishes. Raleigh's judge's hand is in the air as Jacob Pfaff is across, and now Tudor Magda is in. And Raleigh's, you know, maybe not the finish he wanted, but he did make up some time on that rower. And he, man, look at... Look at the result. These guys are just rolling around on the finish line. You think that was a max effort 1K? So Sprague earns 88 points for finishing in fourth. Griffin Raleigh is going to finish 13th. So he'll grab 52 points. It's a difference of 36 now. What an awesome finish we got here. Just pouring everything into the machines. Medeiros rolls across. 
Sprague rolls across. <laughs> Jason Hopper says, I'll have some of that too. A really close finish between those men as Will Morad was able to sneak in as well. But Sprague is going to pick up 36 more points on Griffin Raleigh. Here's Matt Fraser, coach of the HWPO crew. Works with Jason Hopper. And there is James Sprague, who looks like he is on his way to Madison. And out of the gate, we saw some of the young athletes move towards the front of the pack. Cole Grayshaber, one of the first off the rower. But on the rig, that second rig here on the floor, Justin Madero started to pull towards the front. He was second off of the chest of bars because Matt Poulin, second place finisher worldwide in the open, trying to keep his season alive through the last chance qualifier. He was the first back to the 50 thrusters on the second half of this workout. And he couldn't quite catch Scott Tetlow, just a few seconds shy of him, but it was good enough to get the top time in the heat and his best finish of the weekend. Matt Poulin's going to pick up 96 points as he wins the heat, takes second in the event. Scott Tetlow with his first event win of the competition. Justin Medeiros, another top four finish. He takes third, followed by James Sprague. Then Will Morat sneaking in in fifth place. Nikki Brazier is with Matt Poulin. Matt, you were hobbling over, and you were not the only one. I don't think a single person stepped out onto the finish line. What is happening in your body right now? Well, what was happening before I stepped up was, oh, slide, slide, slide. And then I stepped up, and I'm like, it's not happening. Right. I will step. Uh, still trying to keep my feet under me, but uh, that's what it is. Pain cave workout, which is kind of how bad you want it. So. Well, and how bad do you want it? It's the last day of competition. What do you need to do to finish out strong? Uh, like I said, so far on the weekend, had a few events, didn't really go as planned. But you know what? I'm here to fight, here to attack this last day. So one down, one more to go. I'm just going to keep attacking. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Matt Poulin trying to keep himself alive in a fight for a top five position. More from the syndicate crowd when we come back.
So I have the event director, Wilson Peck, here with me, and I'm dying to know from you, Wilson, it takes so much effort, so much energy to make an event like this happen. When it's finally here, how does it feel to kind of see the fruits of your labor in front of you? Oh man, it's it's amazing feeling to see all this come to life. Um, but without all the people out on the floor, all the staff shirts and the, the leadership team, I think that's the trust between those individuals is what really makes the, the gears turn. I know you guys uh, behind the scenes to be very considerate of all the volunteers, all the staff, year over year. We're just amazed by the effort that you guys put into this. And I know that you pull a lot of people from your community in as well. So what does it mean for you to see that kind of generosity and that kind of love all the way down from the community through to the com competition floor? Yeah, I think uh, coming down, there's probably 20 vehicles we caravan down on Sunday to build out this venue and produce this event. And there's about 20 to 30 individuals who are the, the lifeblood of the event from a staff perspective. And I think that relationship built over uh, the last 10 years as a group has really allowed us to be effective. This is the first time we've ever seen back-to-back -back events in the same venue with the same team behind them. I mean, your stress level, normally at the end of a competition, I would say now you can go relax, but you can't really do that, right? You got another, another one coming up. Yeah, I think uh, at the end of uh, this weekend, we're gonna recap and make sure that we have best practices going into the following week. Uh, we'll probably take Monday off completely and disconnect and just make sure that we enjoy this experience of the, all the individuals that took you know, paid time off to be here. And then we'll make everything look good again and make sure that we rehearse over and over before we start the Middle Atlantic Cross the Challenge. Same here. Thanks so much, Wilson. Thank you, Mackie.
All right, folks, the time is now. Your final chance to see these ladies hit the competition floor this weekend in lane number one, Annalise Moore. In lane number two, Karis Demai. In lane number three, Holly Henderson. In lane number four, Natalie Thompson. In lane number five, Roran Scott. In lane number six, Aaliyah Miller. In lane number seven, Allison Rouse. In lane number eight, Cody V. And rounding out your Heat One athletes in lane number nine, Kelsey Shoot. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten, Ten seconds. Five. Stand by. And here we go, folks. The final event of the weekend. A long, hard fought five events in the books, and this is number six. This one dubbed King Kong 2.0. Three rounds, eight ring muscle ups, which our athletes are completing right now. Then they're going to hop up onto the wall for six deficit handstand push ups, four sandbag ground to shoulder. And finally, two squat snatches. So similar movements to what we saw earlier with our teams. Just multiply it times three. And replace that squat clean with squat snatches. As we got our first athlete heading to the barbell here in lane number five. Excuse me, the sandbag first. Roran Scott. And Karis Demai. Holly Henderson getting that sandbag to her shoulder. So these early rounds, no problem. As they get as much of their forearms on that bag and up to their shoulder as possible as we pass the one minute mark, a 10 minute time cap for our individual final here at the Syndicate Crown. And two in the books in lane number five for Roran of CrossFit Point in Beach. As she We'll get it back to her lap and get another one, but your leader now heading to the barbell. Lane four and lane number five, respectively. Natalie Thompson. Almost done with her sandbag. Aaliyah hitting her first rep. And she'll head back to the rings for round number two. So Aaliyah jogging back, done with her first round, right around that two minute mark. Roran Scott, closely in tow, ready to begin her second round. Followed by the athlete in lane number two, Karis Demai of CrossFit Explode. So once again, it's another eight ring muscle ups before getting back to the wall for six deficit. Handstand push ups, four sandbag to shoulder, and two squat snatches. Two fingers remaining up in the air for Aaliyah. As she'll hit her final ring muscle up and head to the wall now ahead of Roran. Roran with a couple more to go. That deficit at six inches for our ladies. 
Also done with round number one is going to be Kelsey Shoot. But all eyes on your leader, lane number six, Aaliyah Miller, is done. And just as she advances to the sandbag, Roran just now getting done with the rings here in round number two. As Aaliyah taking a deep breath, she's the only athlete on the sandbag at this moment. There's one. Remember, it's four total reps before advancing to the two squat snatches. So it's going to be a two sandbag to shoulder lead over Roran Scott, who's just now addressing her 150 pound sandbag. As Aaliyah hits rep number three, Roran hits rep number one as Dima stepping up to her sandbag. So you're one, two, and three, front and center. It goes one, Aaliyah Miller, two, Roran Scott, and three, Karis Dima. Aaliyah looking to finish up round two. 145 on the barbell. As she'll stand up, rep number one. Aaliyah with one more rep to go. As she gets under rep number two, chases it forward a little bit, but she'll stand it up. So she will be done with round number two. Aaliyah heading back to the ring just as Roran gets to the barbell at the five minute mark here in round number two. Let's see how Roran looks. And a smooth first rep with one more to go. As Aaliyah gets ready to begin her third and final round, Roran looking to join her back on the ring underneath that 145 barbell, stands it up, and she'll head back to the ring. As Aaliyah starts back on the ring, muscle ups in lane number six, Demai stepping up to the barbell now as well, shaking out her forearms quick. And racing forward, but losing it behind her. No reps, gonna make another attempt there. As we'll look back at the ring now, dead center, lanes five and six respectively, Roran and Aaliyah. Aaliyah done with her ring muscle ups. As we come upon the six minute mark, Roran looking to try and track her down with four reps remaining. Some high gymnastic skill before some heavy lifting on the back half of each of these rounds. And thus far, no issues for Aaliyah. She's got five more deficit handstand push-ups to go. Let's see if Roran can close the gap and if these ladies will be able to finish up beneath that 10-minute time cap for our final dub, King Kong 2.0. So three handstand push-ups remaining for Aaliyah with a big kip, and she'll have two more to go in a round of six reps. And now Dima done with round two. She's gonna make her way back. As will be the case for Cody V. So there's gonna be a nice little race for third thus far. But the story on the competition floor, Aaliyah Miller at the 7.15 mark, stepping up to the two heavy implements of this three-rounder. Four sandbag to shoulder at a whopping 150 pounds and two squat snatches at 145. She's got one in the bag as we pass 7.30. Aurora making very short work of these handstand push-ups. Cranking them out, ripping them out. And she'll now join Aaliyah on the sandbag. Let's see if Aaliyah has enough of a lead. Three 
three down for Aliyah. One more to go as Roran looks to begin her first rep. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final event of the weekend for these ladies. Let's show them some love and make some noise. Help them finish strong as Aaliyah is moving on for the final time. Head to that final barbell across the competition floor. Two reps separate her from closing the door on her syndicate crown competition. Right in the center of the skull. As rep one will be good. One more to go. The Cobra Command CrossFit athlete stepping up to the barbell for what will hopefully be the final time. And no, misses rep number two. And here comes some company, Roran Scott, with her final two reps to go. Aaliyah taking a deep breath as she'll look to finish up and there it is a good rep ladies and gentlemen your heat winner Aaliyah Miller 921 unofficially with 30 seconds remaining CrossFit Boynton Beach's Roran Scott looking to finish up and she has got her second and final rep and she's across the line Finishing up at 9.39. 15 seconds remaining, folks. Lane number eight, Cody V trying to get one rep in as we'll get ready to count it down in five, three, two, one. And time. And Cody V getting that rep in just at the buzzer. Nice job. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last time you see these athletes on the competition floor. One more big round of applause for their performance this weekend.
One event remains here for the individuals at the Syndicate Crown from the Knoxville Civic Coliseum in Knoxville, Tennessee. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. Sean Woodland and Tommy Marquez up in the booth. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. We are through the first of three heats for the women in King Kong 2.0, presented by Thorne. Three rounds, eight ring muscle-ups, six deficit handstand push-ups, four sandbag to shoulders with that heavy bag, 150 for the women, and then two squat snatches at 145. You know, a, a riff on the original King Kong, which was deadlift, muscle-up, squat clean, handstand push-up, one, two, three, four reps in three rounds for time. This one a little bit beefier. What's the recipe for success presented by Trifecta? Uh, there's a couple here based on, and it's based on what we saw in the first heat. Negative split, I think with all the that the athletes have done this weekend, using that first round to kind of gauge where the roadblocks are going to be and then try and speed up in that second round. And at some point, you're going to have to take a chance, whether it be with the, the squat snatch, the muscle up, the handstand push up, pick your spot to really maybe take a chance and have a Disney moment. 10 women in the second of three heats. In lane number five is Olivia Sulik. She's 11th overall, and the 18-year-old has really had a solid competition. She was hanging around the top five for a while, but then after regional event five, event three here at the Syndicate Crown, she dropped down to eighth, and then after a 20, 21st place finish in Jackie style, now she sits at 11. And this is the first time all weekend she's been outside of the top 10 on the leaderboard. Unfortunately, she doesn't get to compete with the top heat. I spoke with her coach, Nick Simpson, just before that. He promised they're going to be back better than ever. I already consider this an improvement from her 16th place finish last year. Last year. She said she's hoping to go under eight minutes in this workout. And we were fortunate enough to speak to her before everything started here back on Thursday. And she has a great future ahead of her. No doubt. Tremendous poise and maturity at such a young age. Also, big board game fan. Got to give a shout out to anyone that plays some Settlers of Catan. Apparently she gets pretty cutthroat <laughs> during those as well. Super competitive is Olivia Sulik, and she is on her eight ring muscle-ups along with the rest of the field. Three rounds of the eight ring muscle-ups. After this, it's the six deficit handstand push-ups, four sandbags to shoulder at 150 pounds, and then two squat snatches at 145. And now the majority of the field is on to the deficit handstand push-ups. And down in lane number 10, that's Faith Stewart getting set to address the 145-pound barbell. Or pardon me, the sandbag. Paulina Haro is there as well. She's in the black at the top of your screen. And Carolyn Casey. And then at the bottom, Madison McElhaney and Maddie Jones onto the sandbag. That is Faith Stewart. Stewart coming in in 20th place overall. Her best finish of the competition came in 2014 regional event number five, the third event of the Syndicate Crown, where she finished seventh overall. Lanes four and five, Taylor Sykes and Olivia Sulik. Sulik on the right, Sykes on the left, and Sulik knocks out her first rep at 145. Faith Stewart is also on to the 145-pound barbell for the first time. Two reps down for Olivia Sulik, and she will return for eight more ring muscle-ups here in round two of three. Also at the bottom of your screen, Mad Madison McElhaney in the blue on the lead pace. McElhaney in 19th place overall. Her best finish came in the opening event of the competition, the Barbell Complex. She had a lift of 225 pounds. That was good enough for a tie for fifth. You saw Top her on the screen. You saw her catch those first two muscle-ups really, really high and just pause for a split second before locking out. You have to go through some portion of a dip on these muscle-ups. You can't just kip completely to support, similar to an uprise. Taylor Sykes is also onto the rings, as is Sequoia Barrera and Polina Haro. Also down in lane number 10, Faith Stewart back to the rings, and she is done, and she will now 
take the lead as she is the first woman on to her second set of six deficit handstand push-ups. Olivia Sulik moving on to the handstand push-ups as well. Six reps they need to complete at a six-inch deficit. Now it's on to the sandbag for four reps at 150 pounds. They have to bring it to the shoulder each time. Time to beat belongs to Elia Miller. 922.09 seconds. Sulik is done with her handstand push-ups and onto the sandbag for the second time. McElhaney is struggling in, in lane number one, just can't seem to get her last muscle up here. These are your two leaders on the right. She's pointing Faith to Stewart her on the left, Olivia Sulik. She's pointing to her chest there. I'm not sure whether it was lungs trying to catch her breath or maybe something hurting in the catch portion of the dip. And Sulik is working on those sandbags as McElhaney just got through her last muscle-up rep. She's onto the handstand push-ups. 10-minute time cap here, second of three heats as McElhaney is on to the deficit handstand push-ups. Got through those with no problem, and she will join Sulik Barrera, Colette Casey, and Polina Haro on the sandbag. And now Olivia Sulik back to the barbell for the second time. Her third and final set will be performed at a, performed at a barbell at the other end of the floor. Faith Stewart also getting set to complete her second set of two squat snatches at 145. And Sulik is done, and she will go back to start round three. And Faith Stewart has her first of two reps done. Sequoia Barrera joining Stewart at the barbell for the end of round two. There is Sequoia Barrera, who currently sits in third place in this heat, 14th place overall. Best finish was a 10th in event four skiing with Karen. Olivia Sulik working through her third and final set of eight muscle-ups. Sulik with three more to go. Faith Stewart is back on to the muscle up for the final time. And Stewart really flirting with that line of locking out and falling back at the same time. Think back to the muscle up by Athlon a few years ago at the yep. games. Julie Fouché got nailed for the exact same thing. This is the first time I've ever heard a crowd at a CrossFit competition booth. And you can see the difference in the muscle up technique here. Olivia Sulik using more of like almost a false grip kind of. You don't have to pull as high because you don't have to actually re-grip during the process and turn your wrists over. And Sulik onto the handstand push up. Six reps here at the six inch deficit. Face through it right behind her. Sulik is done and now to the sandbag for the final time. Four reps she has to complete at 150 pounds and then two final reps at the 145 pound barbell that is at the other end of the floor. Sulik did around 8.30 in training when she tested this. She told us in her pre-event interview she thought she could get underneath eight. And she's halfway through these reps on the sandbag. She's the only woman on her third round. Now Faith Stewart is there as well. And one more rep for Sulik. Trying to track down Elliot Miller's top time of 922.09 seconds. And Sulik has done it to hustle down to the final 145-pound barbell for two reps here. Two and a half minutes to go before we hit the 10-minute time cap. First rep is no problem. Second rep is good, and Olivia Sulik is going to get in inside eight minutes and set the new mark to beat. Olivia Sulik with a time of 751.66 seconds. 
Definitely not the last time we're going to see this young woman on this stage. No doubt. She is fully pot committed to pursuing this sport as a full-time professional athlete. And at such a young age already, you know, 18, 19 years old, already hanging around the top 10 here at a, a deep semifinal event. Sequoia Barrera it just came across the finish line, 823.42 seconds. And now Faith Stewart trying to finish. Paulina Harlow making her way up to the barbell. Shouldn't be a problem for Harlow, who tied for first in the barbell complex with a lift of 245. Now Faith Stewart is across. Two done for Harlow, and she will make it in. Top four times in this heat right now, the top four times in the event. That's Colette Casey, who has 30 seconds to complete two reps at 145 to get inside the time cap. Fifteen seconds left for Casey. And she will hit it. So Colette Casey, with a couple seconds to spare, gets in inside the 10-minute time cap. Five women in that second heat finish inside the time cap. Olivia Sulik, the only one to go sub-8, 751.66 seconds. And that is a great moment right there from Colehead Casey. Getting to finish underneath the time cap, your last time out. What's waiting for you at the finish line, but your family. That's the good stuff right there. Women's Heat 3 is going to be later on, but the men will be up next. We'll have the first two heats for them in event number six. King Kong 2.0 coming up.
without ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming your individual man in heat number one of the competition floor. In lane number two, Vicente Azua Jr. In lane number three, Mike McDonald. In lane number four, Dex Hopkins. In lane number five, Mark Hutchinson. In lane number six, Roldan Goldbaum. In lane number seven, Tristan Majorano. In lane number eight, Ray Romanic. And in lane number nine, Daniel Sterling. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. And off and away they go, flying high on the rings for this three-rounder dubbed King Kong 2.0. Eight ring muscle-ups, six deficit handstand push-ups, four sandbag to shoulder, and two squat snatches. These barbells now locked and loaded at 205 pounds for your gentlemen. All of our men unbroken on that first round of eight and onto the wall now for their nine inch deficit handstand push ups. And we got our first couple of athletes making their way to the sandbag. Mark Hutchinson, one of them in lane number five. Rolled in gold bob in the purple shirt, lane number six, also getting his forearms around that bag. For the men, 200 is what those bad boys weigh. Dead Hopkins. Catching it in the power position with his knees bent, standing up for two reps. Again, it's four before moving on as Mark Hutchinson wastes no time heading into the barbell, getting ready to grip and rip. Same can be said in lane number nine for Dan Sterling in the blue shirt, pink shorts. As he hits his first, him and Mark, right now, synchronized squat snatches as they'll both head back to the rig now for round number two. But Sterling jogging back to minimize that time between rounds. Everyone knows the classic King Kong if you don't look it up. The original strongman CrossFit combo. Now this one 2.0 as Mike McDonald in lane number three makes his way back to the rig. Tristan. Also getting ready to jump back up. But ahead of Tristan and ahead of Mike is Mike Hutchinson. Mark Hutchinson and then down the way, Daniel Sterling taking a break here in his second set of ring muscle ups. But it'll be Mark Hutchinson unbroken on round two. So this is the first of three total heats meaning one of these athletes is gonna set the time to beat with still two more to go in their final event of the weekend. And unbroken ring muscle ups, unbroken deficit handstand push ups for Mark Hutchinson. Stepping up to that 200 sandbag. And he's taking far less time getting back on that thing 
as Roldan Goldbaum and Mike McDonald are flanked on either side of Mark Hutchinson to begin their second round of Sam Bagner's shoulder. Both with two, but not before Mark Hutchinson now onto the barbell for his two squat snatches. And there's one. One more to go as Mark will look to get back to that ring first. And there it is, Mark Hutchinson, ladies and gentlemen, at the 340 mark, making his way back to the ring. Mark went unbroken in rounds one and two on the gymnastics. Mike McDonald looking to keep pace with one more squat snatch to go. He'll sit in second place. 10 minute time cap for your final here at the Syndicate Crown. And Mark Hutchinson hanging on to those rings. as he will indeed remain unbroken. The Triforce CrossFit athlete kicking up and getting back to it. It's six deficit handstand push-ups at nine inches. There's three, four, two more to go. One final rep if Mark can lock it out of Big Kip. And there it is, Mark Hutchinson, ladies and gentlemen. Onto the sandbag for the final time. Grabbing some chalk before getting back to it. Remember, folks, for that final set of squat snatches, they're going to head down the competition floor to the barbell, closest to that finish line. Mark's going to put up a very impressive time. But will it be untouchable with two heats to go? There's two of four reps. There's three, keeping it in front of him. One more rep to go for Mark Hutchinson. And here we go, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your leader, Mark Hutchinson. Two reps remaining on his competition weekend here at the syndicate crown two squat snatches and one final jump up onto that finishing platform as he gets under one and he's gonna try and go touch and go and he will do it ladies and gentlemen mark hutchinson and what a way to close out his weekend six 24 unofficially as he'll be waiting up there quite a while the next two guys on those sandbags that's going to be mike mcdonald and down the way rolled in gold bob taking their good old time taking some deep breaths before getting those forearms wrapped around that sandbag as rolled in gets another mike gets another it's going to be mike jogging down the floor next does he have what it takes to be the next athlete to close this thing out looking behind him it's his for the taking as we come upon the 7 15 mark rolled it now making his way down the floor but mike grips and rips there is one gonna quickly follow the bar down wiping off his hands for some maybe Extra perspiration from the earlier portions of this event. One more rep to go. And there it is, the CrossFit Crash Athlete, Mike McDonald. Strong suit, CrossFit's very own thing. Touch and go. Rolled in, gold bomb. Vicente. Gets himself into position, 
fails number one as Dex Hopkins makes his way down the floor. And Dex is gonna have a chance due to the miss to slip into fourth here. There's one for Dex. Vicente with one, Tristan with one. Final rep for Dex Hopkins and he will get it done. Make some noise for Dex Hopkins. And Tristan Myrano across the line. Right at about the 827 mark. Vicente Azua Jr. with one rep remaining after a no rep earlier on. Perhaps that hook rip misses that attempt. I'm in a 205 pound squat snatch. Might not be much fresh, but after all the work they've done this weekend, they could feel dang near like a one hour rep. But Vicente Azua Jr. gets it done right around nine minutes flat. So we've got one minute remaining for these guys to try and close it out strong. Down in lane number nine, Dan Sterling on his final set of sandbag to shoulder. Raymond Romanic also getting ready to head to the sandbag here with 30 seconds left. So with 30 seconds, Sterling making his way down the floor in two snatches, still to go. Knoxville, what do you say? Let's help him get at least one in the bag. Tightening up that belt, 15 seconds. If he gets it, he might as well try and go touch and go. Let's see what he's got. But ladies and gentlemen, you've got to get behind him, make some noise. There's one, five seconds, three, two, one. And time, valiant effort, ladies and gentlemen, by Daniel Sterling, almost getting that second one. One final time, this will be the last time you see these guys out on the competition floor. Make some noise for your Heat One men, closing out their weekend here at the Syndicate Crown. But the man setting himself up with the top time and the time to beat, Mark Hutchinson. Thank you, Dylan. The man, the myth, the legend, Dylan Malitsky himself. He too, King Kong 2.0 for our individual men. Coming up in about four minutes.
We are down to the final event of the weekend for the individuals here at the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee. One heat is down, two heats remain for the men. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez. Nikki Brazier is the third member of our broadcast team. She's down on the competition floor. Event number six presented by Thorn King Kong 2.0. Yeah, the reps used to go one, two, three, four. We've effectively doubled that. It goes eight, six, four, two. Ring muscle ups, deficit handstand push ups. The deficit for the men is nine inches. The 200 pound sandbag is up next, four reps, and then two squat snatches at 205. Tommy, cook us up a recipe for success presented by Trifecta. Well, after looking at it, you know, for some of these athletes, especially on the bubble or someone to try and make a splash, you're going to need to take a chance here, whether that's maybe going for a tap and go on the squat snatch, maybe hopping up a little bit sooner on the rings, stretching out those handstand push-ups more than you'd like to, but at some point, you're gonna have to take a chance. 10 men in this second of three heat. Scott Tetlow will be in lane at number six. Tetlow comes in in 12th place overall, moved up six spots in the overall standings after a vent, the vent win in Jackie style, which saw him turn in a blistering time of 11 minutes, 15.65 seconds. Wouldn't be surprised to see him do well here. He absolutely blitzed Jackie style, getting an event win. Another take on a classic CrossFit benchmark here on Sunday. He's tremendous muscle-ups, handstand push-ups. The big question is the sandbag. Alex Smith, one of two Smiths in this heat. Brother Ben also competing here. And it's very possible we're watching the swan song of Ben Smith here. You know, an athlete that has been to the games 11 times. He's won it all in 2015. He's got four CrossFit Games medals under his belt and you know, when you talk about some of the greats in the sport, we don't have a Hall of Fame yet, but if he was a first ballot Hall of Famer, you look it up in the dictionary for CrossFit, and it would be Ben Smith. And he first came on the scene when he was posting those videos of him lifting in front of a refrigerator in his garage, and now he is one of the greatest male competitors that we have seen in the sport. You know, 14 straight seasons he's competed. He showed up at the games for the first time in Aromas way back in 2009, like you said. You know, kind of made a name for himself lifting in his parents' garage. There was that white fridge there. Rogue even made a shirt about it. It was just one of those early stories and things that endeared him as an athlete. And, you know, he had developed into one of the premier athletes out of the Mid-Atlantic region in the early days of regionals. You know, in, in a transition year between Froning and Fraser, he, you know, he took advantage in 2015, won the whole thing. He's basically accomplished everything there is to do in this sport. Scott Tetlow in the green shirt, he and Hal Fisher were the first two men to the barbell, and Tetlow gets through his two reps at 205 cleanly, and he moves back to the rig to begin his second of three rounds. Mike Evans in lane 10 is also done. And Garrett Clark in the army green pants in lane three, but Scott Tetlow has had a great Sunday here, started off with an event win in order to get himself in contention for another one. He's gonna have to try and track down Mark Hutchinson's top time of 625.23 seconds. Eight ring muscle ups onto the six deficit handstand push ups at nine inches. And he's ahead of Hutchinson's pace so far. Hutchinson finished the first round around 130, was back on the rings around two minutes. And already Tetlow tearing into these handstand push-ups. Tetlow is done. Back to the bag for four reps at 200 pounds. Tetlow looking to wind up inside the top ten when it's all said and done here. Tetlow through those quickly. Back to the barbell. Two squat snatches at 205 to close out his second of three rounds. 
Are more men getting to the sandbag as Tetlow is the only guy on the barbell and he misses his first attempt. Tetlow is good on attempt number two, one rep remaining for him, and then one final round. And we'll miss that. Brian Wynn in lane nine, and Evan Rogers now stepping up to the barbell. The four attempts for two good reps for Scott Tetlow, and now back to the race. Something to keep in mind, those two no reps cost him about 20 seconds in total. Here are the two Smith brothers who are competing. Ben Smith is on the barbell for the second time. Alex Smith is working on the sandbag. And the Smith family and representatives from CrossFit Krypton are here cheering, cheering on both Alec and Ben. I saw Ben Smith's dad walking around here earlier. Always good to see him. Tetlow gets through his final eight-ring muscle-ups and onto the six deficit handstand push-ups for the final time. Mark Hutchinson's time to beat. Creeping closer, 625.23 seconds. Tetlow through cleanly on the handstand push-ups, back to the sandbags, four reps, and then he'll work his way to the far end of the floor for his final two squat snatches at 205. Halfway through. Good pace for Scott Tetlow here. Less than a minute and a half now to track down Mark Hutchinson. And there's no urgency here for him, given that he missed two lifts in that previous one. I would maybe take a nice long walk here, take a quick second. One minute to go before we hit Mark Hutchinson's top time. Final two reps for Scott Tetlow. And once again, missing his first attempt. The next best time after Hutchinson's is Mike McDonald at 739.26. So second place in the event, very much attainable for Scott Tetlow here. Evan Rogers is running his way down the floor to get to the barbell and join Tetlow on his final set. Tetlow has now missed his first two attempts. Here comes Evan Rogers. Rogers sticks his first rep. He is in the lead, and he's right back to work. Two reps down for Evan Rogers, and he is going to set the mark to beat. Just getting in inside Mark Hutchinson's time. Rogers at 623.29 seconds. Nick Urankar looking on as Scott Tetlow hits his first rep. Now Ben Smith on the barbell for the final time. One rep is down for Ben Smith. Two reps are down for the 2015 finish man on earth. And he closes out in style. Ben Smith, 645.45 seconds. As Scott Tetlow was able to get in at 645.07. So Tetlow's going to take third right now in the event. Smith will take fourth. Brian Wynn also got across the finish line. Now Garrett Clark across, 714.36 for him. And here is Alex Smith finishing up. Alex Smith in at 721.84 seconds right now, good enough for seventh in the event. Matthias Porter across the finish line, and there is Ben Smith. Smith came in in 16th place overall, right now fourth place in this sixth and final event. And the question is, is that the last time we will see Ben Smith compete? 
in a CrossFit Games season event. Very well could be. I know there's been some discussions behind the scenes that this might be his last go. Al Fisher in lane four, going through his final two reps. And Mike Evans is over the line. Good to see the Smith brothers out there, side by side on the competition floor. There's a whole lot of fitness in that family. Between them, their brother Dane Smith, their dad, who's competed in the Masters Online Qualifier, deadlifted something close to 600 pounds. It was... Two great ambassadors for the sport and for the community, Ben Smith and his brother Alex. One minute left before we hit the time cap. And Spencer Airy is the last man on the floor. And Airy is in. He has the top time we've seen in 2014 Regional Event 5. Did that event in 245 flat. It's Evan Rogers who sneaks in at the end ahead of Scott Tetlow, sets the time to beat it. 623.29 seconds, two seconds better than Mark Hutchinson. Scott Tetlow winds up in second place in the heat, just ahead of Ben Smith. Brian Wynn, 10, 10 seconds back at Smith, and then Garrett Clark at 714.36 to round out the top five. And this could be very well the last time we're seeing Ben Smith on the competition floor. I mean, what more, to, what more can you say? 11 CrossFit Games appearances. He's been in the sport for 14 seasons, seven top 10 finishes at the Games, four podiums at the Games. He's got a CrossFit Games medal in every color, including a gold one when he was the 2015 fittest man on earth. I mean, you can't tell the history of CrossFit and the CrossFit Games without Ben Smith. He's been an essential piece of this sport's history. And it's great to see him finishing out strong in a race to the finish, much to the delight of the crowd. Hats off to a great career if this is the last time we're seeing him out. And hats off to Evan Rogers, who now has the top score with one heat remaining, 623.29 seconds. Scott Tetlow, less than four tenths of a second ahead of Ben Smith. Brian Wynn takes fourth, and it's Garrett Clark rounding out the top five. Only two heats remain, the final heats for the women and the final heat for the men, and we will know who will be leaving the syndicate crown and heading for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. We'll be back with the final heats after this.
Seven minutes. Five minutes, five minutes, and I'm, I want to paint a picture for you guys so you know how serious this next heat is. Currently, Haley Adams is number one coming into this event. Yeah, you can cheer for that. You can cheer for that. Two points behind Haley, Alexis Raptus. There you go. The third and fourth spot, Paige Semenza and Colin Brander are separated by three points. Ugh. The fifth and sixth spot, Christy Aramo and Gabby McClelland are separated by three points. And Ariel Lowen in seventh is certainly within striking distance, only six points away from McClelland. If there was ever a time to get pumped up and get involved, this next heat is that time. Are y'all ready to get involved? Come on, there's a lot at stake here, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna kick things off here in about three and a half minutes. going to Madison? We will find out the answer to that question after this third and final heat of event six for the women at the Syndicate Crown from the Knoxville Civic Coliseum in Knoxville, Tennessee. Glad you're with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez, Nikki Brazier on the competition floor, and it is close for that final spot. Christy Aramo O'Connell was able to vault into the top five. Gabby McClelland was your leader going into event five. She is now down in sixth place and has to make up three points on Aramo O'Connell to earn a spot to the cross no, game. Just Ariel Lowen, there on the jumbo also Tron still right alive. Now. She is just nine points back of Aramo O'Connell. Event six is King Kong 2.0 presented by Thorne. We're going to have three rounds of eight ring muscle ups, six deficit handstand push ups. The deficit is six inches for the women. Four sandbag to shoulder with the 150 pound bag. Gotta show control at the top. Two squat snatches at 145, a 10 minute cap. 
This one's going to be pretty quick. And if there was ever a time to roll the dice, it's time to do it now as we take a look at our recipe for success presented by Trifecta. Well, you know, looking at spots three through seven, only 21 points separate those athletes. There's going to come up a time where you're going to have to take a chance and maybe push through a movement or an implement. It's going to be relative to the athlete, but you know, you got to risk it to get the biscuit if you're trying to make it to the CrossFit Games. Let's bring in the third member of our broadcast crew, Nikki Brazier. In lane number eight, in sixth place. No, King Kong yeah, 2.0 is a very play. fitting way to end this competition because in King Kong, three, the original version, three, as we know, was actually the inspiration for the event directors to start CrossFit in the first place. It's really an OG CrossFit workout if you're familiar with who have been doing CrossFit for a while. So elevating it to the next level is a great way to send someone to Madison. Here are your lane assignments for the final heat for the women. Chrissy Aramo O'Connell will be in lane number three. She currently sits in fifth place overall. The women chasing her. Gabby McClellan in lane eight and Ariel Lowen. She will be in lane two, but there is Chrissy Aramo O'Connell. Who is your overall fifth overall after her great performance in event number five. And she's won two of the last three events, Sean. She finally found her groove after a rough day one. Hoping to put keep the pressure on. And Gabby McClellan, who is your overall leader coming into the day in one event, falls out of a qualifying spot. But you know what? A strong event here, and her game game's dreams are still alive. Ariel Lowen, seventh place after five events. She's got to make up nine points on Aramo O'Connell to get back to the CrossFit Games. She qualified out of the Granite Games last year. We are underway. Top time so far that we have seen Olivia Sulik, seven minutes, 51.66 seconds. Ariel Lowen getting to work on her eight ring muscle ups here in round one of three. Now there is your overall leader, Haley Adams. And she has gone from near the bottom of the standings all the way up to first place. She started the competition in a tie for 23rd, then jumped up 12 spots after a first place finish in Oregon Trail. She sat in 11th overall. Then she moved to fourth, up to third, and then after the last event, she put herself on top of the overall leaderboard. Nothing outside of the top three after finishing in 23rd in the Barbell Complex. And this has just been a huge evolution for her. One of the things she hasn't done since she joined the individual competition was win. She ended her teenage career with a win, but despite being a top contender at the games every year, she hasn't been able to front run at any one of these events, whether it's semifinals or sanctionals. That could change today. And there is Alexis Raptis, who has never been outside of the top five except after the first event. After the first event, she was tied for 12th, and then she moved up to fifth, up to third, and has sat in second place over the last two events. Another teenage athlete, actually a, a year or two ahead of Haley in the teenage divisions, competing way back in 2015. Christy Aramo O'Connell was one of the first women to the 145-pound barbell. She and Paige Semenza, who's on the right, got there at about the same time. And Aramo O'Connell is your leader right now, and Paige Semenza is right behind her. Second round starts with those eight-ring muscle-ups. Haley Adams working her way back to the rig, as well as Christine Cohenbrander and Gabby McClellan. And if you're if you're one of the bubble athletes, Gabby or Ariel, this is not a good sign. Christy Ermo Apollo, one of the best in the world at ring muscle ups. Remember, she was going toe to toe with Tia for the 30 muscle ups for time back in 2018. If if she was able to get to that first round of snatches relatively unscathed and handle the sandbag, there's not much that's gonna really trip her up. It's all about just kind of keeping it between the lines now and making sure you're resting enough so you don't redline. Saw the time to beat in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen from Olivia Tulick and Chrissy Aramo Connell all by herself in the lead here. Three reps remain on this 150-pound sandbag. Gabby McClellan is on the right and she has taken a break here on her second set of muscle-ups. Here comes Paige Semenza. Semenza, third place overall. Just, if she can hang close to Chrissy Aramo O'Connell, she'll be back 
at the CrossFit Games as well. Aramo O'Connell done with her four sandbag cleans. Haley Adams on the left side in the yellow top, moving to the sandbag for the second time as Aramo O'Connell gets ready for her second of three sets here at 145. Two squats next. And can't hit the first one. Ariel Lowen is on the sandbag as well. She's on the left-hand part of the screen in the green top. Lowen nine points back of O'Connell for that fifth and final spot. First rep now is good for Christy Aramo O'Connell. At this point, if I'm Christy, I'm starting to take a peek just to make sure I've got plenty of distance between me and the athletes that are chasing me. It doesn't help, though, that Gabby McClellan is completely across the competition floor. And she is in last place right now in this heat, or second to last place. So Gabby McClellan near the back here as Christy Aramo O'Connell is through two rounds. If this keeps up, it's not going to matter what either Lowen or McClellan do here in this event because Chrissy Aramo O'Connell is coming up with another clutch performance on Sunday. Paige Semenza and Haley Adams heading back to start round three. Aramo O'Connell with two straight finishes to start the weekend outside the top 10. She was 12th and then 17th, found herself in 19th place overall after Friday, but then climbed all the way up to 8th place, moved up another spot after skiing with Karen in the 7th after Jackie Style, and winning that event, she moved herself into 5th. And typically, Christy's one of those athletes that benefits from having, you know, double-digit events at the games, really allows her to... You know, lean on her cardiovascular endurance and, you know, start to even out some of those rough finishes on maybe like the heavy lift or the high power output type workouts that she has struggled with in the past. Erebo O'Connell to the sandbag for the third and final time. And she took a peek there, looked left and right just to make sure that she was alone on the sandbag. So Katie Callior in lane one is still on her second round. Callior's on the left. Halfway through these four reps, and Gabby McClellan just finished round two. And for Christy here, she's going to have to switch to the barbell that's on the other side of the floor. So she's going to have a nice long walk to look left, look right, get some of her air back, and make sure that she's got plenty in the tank to finish here. So Christy Aroma O'Connell. Two reps between her and yet another trip to the CrossFit Games. Two squat snatches at 145. She has plenty of time. Semenza, Adams, and Raptis are all on the sandbag for the final time, but they are no threat right now to Christy Aramo O'Connell. And Haley's one rep ahead of Alexis Raptis, and the winner between those two in this event wins the event outright with only two points separating them. So first rep is no good for Aramo O'Connell, but still plenty of time here because Ariel Lowen is on the sandbag for the final time. But still has some reps to go. First rep down for Christy Aramo O'Connell, one to go. No reason to panic here. She, she missed the first rep of the last round, was able to come right back with two straight reps. Haley Adams and Paige Semenza heading to the barbell for the time, final time as Ariel Lowen just got a no rep on the sandbag. Rep number two is good for Chrissy Aramo O'Connell, and we will see you in Wisconsin. <laughs> Haley Adams with one to go as Paige Semenza is in, and she will return to the CrossFit Games. Haley Adams is going to stand atop the podium if she can win this race. And she just gets in ahead of Alexis Raptus by less than a second. And now Christine Kohlenbrander, fourth place overall coming into this event. She was just on the outside looking in last year at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, and it looks like Christine Cohenbrander finished the job she started last year, and she is on her way to the CrossFit Games. Meredith Swindle closing out her event. Christine Best onto the barbell. 
It's Justin Kotler from the underdog screw there in the red shirt on the left side of your screen. And this should lock Spoke too soon. If she gets this last rep, it should lock up a spot in the last chance qualifier for Christine Best. She came into the, this event in eighth. And Christine Best is across spots six, seven, and eight here. Do keep their seasons alive in the last chance qualifiers. Ariel Lowen ran into a ton of trouble on that last round of sandbag cleans. The Lowen is trying to get herself into the last chance qualifier as well. She was in seventh place overall. Now she's ahead of Gabby McClellan, who is just now getting to the barbell for the final time. First rep is down. What a weekend for Gabby McClellan. Obviously, probably not ending the exact way that she wanted, but she turned some heads and raised some eyebrows this weekend with her performance. And she could still be alive this season if she stays in either spot six, seven, or eight to earn a spot in the last chance qualifier. Paige Semenza going back to the CrossFit Games. Christy Aramo O'Connell with two event wins to close out the syndicate crowd. That is Katie Callior, who's just trying to get as many reps in as she possibly can before the time cap here. And she was 70th in quarterfinals. You know, not necessarily one of the top 10 athletes coming in here, but to finish the weekend in that top heat. Made a run at that rep, but it's not going to count. But Christy Aramo O'Connell, two wins on Sunday to get herself back to the CrossFit Games. 657.12 seconds. And then we had the close finish for the competition victory between Haley Adams and Alexis Raptus. And Haley Adams was able to get across the finish line less than a second ahead of Raptus. And that is going to put her on top of the podium here at the Syndicate Crown. And for Gabby McClellan, she definitely proved that she's going to be around for a while after the performance we saw today. Did not end the way that she wanted, but certainly picked up a lot of fans with what she was able to do over the first two days of competition. Fighting for a game spot. It was Christy Aramo O'Connell, just like she did in Jackie Stout earlier today. Came out in front, leading the way through the first couple of rounds. And if you're sitting in that fifth spot, game spot on the line, you got to leave no doubt. Getting a good push from Paige Semenza. She was trying to hold off Gabby McClellan. And by the time she got to the barbell, she was pretty much all alone. And after already having two event wins for the weekend, for Christy Aramo to close the competition with three event wins in total, secures her spot to the CrossFit Games. And then the overall lead was up for grabs as well. You saw the failed rep from Haley Adams just a second ago. Open the door for Alexis Raptus. They finished just about the same time, but Haley able to get across the finish line first, get that chip timer to the finish mat. What a way to end it. Chris Aramo O'Connell, back-to-back event wins to close out her competition. The only woman to go sub seven. Paige Semenza will take second. Haley Adams just beating out Alexis Raptus. And then Christine Kohlenbrander finishing fifth and looking like she's locking up a spot inside the top five in the trip to the CrossFit Games. But Raptus and Adams talking things over. After a razor-thin finish between the two of them, Christine Kohlenbrander last year here in Knoxville at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge was just two points out. This year should be a much different feeling for her. Yeah, and you know, there's a history of athletes being just on the bubble one year, getting that experience, kind of proving to themselves that they can, they can do it, that they belong, and then coming right back and qualifying. And Christine fits there, you know, a team athlete with 417, you know, missed out just last year, got to go to the games on the demo team came in with a different sense of confidence and 
It, it showed, particularly when there was adversity, right? Having that tough event on the legless rope climb, unfazed by it, hangs in the pocket, manages to get herself, you know, in back back into the top five in the finale and another strong performance, outperforming what she did in training. Well done. Quick break. We'll be back with the final results for the women after this. on your mat, please. Athletes, please back to your mats. Thank you. You. Folks, results are coming in. Give us just a couple of seconds here. We're probably waiting for Gabby to get back on her mat, honestly. Yeah, you, Gabby. Gabby, you're not on your mat. That's what we're waiting on, Gabby. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Gabby. It's not all your fault. We are awaiting the final results for the women here after they just completed the third and final heat of event number six. So let's send it down to the competition floor. Noah Dean with the official announcement of the five women who will be representing the Syndicate crown at the CrossFit Games. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the results of our individual women. Winning the inaugural Syndicate crown and quite possibly having the best fan base. I said quite possibly, not guaranteed. Haley Adams. <laughs> Haley accumulated a total of 502 points. Simply amazing. With 496 points. Alexis Raptus. In third place, former hockey player, Paige Semenza. In fourth place, you will see her in Madison, Wisconsin at the Noble CrossFit Games. Yet again, Christy Aramo O'Connell! <laughs> so I'm told I'm, going, I'm supposed to delay, and I am going to delay, but I'm going to send a message in that delay. All of these ladies are very much an inspiration, and I mean that. It's cool to see these ladies fight commit. I wish my daughter was here so I could point to any one of these girls and say, hey, that's, that's what we're going for. But uh, I'm going to delay just a few more seconds. 
Oh, come on, guys. Hey, we're family. We love each other. Big hugs later. Group hugs. In fifth place, she fought so hard last year and didn't quite make it, but this year, Christine Cohen Brander <laughs> will make it to the Noble CrossFit Games. One more round of applause for all our ladies here today. Christine Kohlenbrander, after the disappointment last year, gets in this year. In fifth place overall, Haley Adams stands atop the podium. Alexis Raptis, Christy Aramo O'Connell, and Paige Semenza. The women who will be representing the syndicate crown at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Fantastic Sunday for Christy Aramo O'Connell, who started the day on the outside looking in and delivered when the pressure was on. Back-to-back -back event wins in events five and six to get herself into fourth place and back to Madison, Wisconsin. What a difference a year makes. Three women in the top five here just missed last year in year one of the semifinals. Three women at the last chance qualifier, Alexis Raptis, Paige Semenza, Christine Kohlenbrander. Coming back strong in 2022, Haley Adams getting over the hump, winning her first competition since the teenage divisions, and Christy Aramo O'Connell wins three out of four in the back half of the competition. I mean, she was just lights out. So Ariel Lowen, Gabby McClelland, and Christine Best are the three women who will head to the last chance qualifier. Lowen finishing in sixth, McClelland is seventh, and Christine Best is in eighth. Let's go down to Nikki Brazer, who is with your 2022 Syndicate Crown champion, Haley Adams. Haley, your first big win after everything you've been through, all the way down from the teen division to here. What does it mean to stand atop the podium right now? Um, it means a lot this year. I feel like I'm the happiest and healthiest person of myself. So it means so much, and I know that I'm on the right track. So I'm excited for the games. What do you do between now and then to prepare? Train my butt off. And I'll see you in Madison. Congrats, girl. Thank you. Thank you. And rounding out to a in lane number five in first. Haley Adams heading back to the CrossFit Games for the seventh time in her career. The men coming up next to close out the 2022 Syndicate Crown in their final heat of event and number six at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum here in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is where we stand coming into this event. Matt Poulin needs to make up 32 points on Tudor Magda. Not impossible, but it's going to need to take an event win from Poulin and Something bad to happen to Tudor Magna in order for that to take place. King Kong 2.0 presented by Thorn. Three rounds for time. Ring muscle ups, deficit handstand push ups, sandbag to shoulders, squat snatches, eight, six, four, two descending rep schemes. That's actually double the reps of what traditional King Kong was. For the deficit, for the men, nine inches on a 200 pound sandbag and 205 on the barbell. And for Matt Poole and the recipe for success presented by Trifecta, gotta take a chance now. Yeah, at this point you're facing a 30 plus point deficit. Brings shades of Cole Sager in the Northwest and West Regionals back in the day. And each one of those times, his feedback was, hey, you know, you gotta shoot for the moon here and that's gonna be what it takes if he wants to go to the games. Let's send it back down to Nikki Brazier. It's interesting. The one thing that's really common across all of these top athletes when I talk to their coaches in the back is that they still get nerves, even though they've been on the competition floor a million times, even though we're at the end of the weekend. But they all have a plan that they need to stick to. What makes it difficult is that the energy down here on the competition floor is enough to fire anyone up. So it's going to be hard to stick to those plans. We'll see who can execute. Here are the 10 men in this third and final heat. Justin Medeiros, your overall leader. He has a 60-point lead on Jason Hopper. 
for first place. Tudor Magda will be in lane number three. Matt Poulin at the other end of the floor, the guy who's trying to chase down that man. He's going to have to beat him by a wide margin in order to make up that 32-point deficit. And there is Matt Poulin, who put himself in striking distance, keeping his game's hopes alive and maybe keeping his season alive with what he did in event number five. He was able to finish second overall. He's had two straight finishes inside the top four. Can really use another one here in King Kong 2.0. And Justin Medeiros, who came here looking to make up for last year and beat the guy that stood on top of the podium at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, Jason Hopper, and Medeiros is well on his way towards doing that. Six twenty-three twenty-nine from Evan Rogers is the top time. Justin Medeiros and company getting to work on the first of three sets of eight ring muscle-ups. After this, it's the six deficit handstand push-ups on to four reps of sandbag to shoulder and then a final two squat snatches at 205. I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of these men go under six minutes. I know a handful of them have broken the six minute barrier in testing. The Tudor Magda in the green shirt was one of the first men off the rings along with Justin Medeiros. Now every man onto his opening set of deficit handstand push-ups. And Tudor Magda out early getting right to that bag. Here comes Will Morad and Justin Medeiros and Jacob Pfaff. Jason Hopper as well coming to the bag. And Matt Poulin if, picking up the bag for his first rep. If Tudor's going to hold on, he has to finish eighth or better to hold off Matt Poulin. Poulin would have the tie break over Tudor if he won an event. Tudor's through his first four sandbag cleans down to the barbell for the first time. Here come Medeiros and Jason Hopper to join Magda. First rep is good. Will Morad and Griffin Raleigh also onto the barbell. Second rep is good for Tudor Magda. He is your leader after round number one along with Justin Medeiros. And it's a good sign for Magda. Snatches look easy, and really I think they're going to get easier as he moves along here. Remember, these athletes have been corralled for a while. They've been waiting for the announcement to come out onto the floor. And those first couple snatches are just kind of greasing the groove again. And James Sprague after tying for 24th. A lot like what Haley Adams did for the women. An event win, a second, a sixth, and then a fourth to get himself into third place overall. And he just has to avoid a blow up here. And he should stay inside the top five. Although he is one of the last men back to the ring. Justin Medeiros working on his second set of six deficit handstand push-ups. He has three remaining. Final rep for Medeiros as Tudor Magda is done. Medeiros got a no rep, so Tudor Magda is all by himself in the lead. He'll move to the sandbag for the second time. Magda on the left side of your screen. Jason Hopper and Will Morad also heading to the sandbag for the second time along with Jacob Pfaff at the far end of the floor. As far as the battle goes for the last chance online qualifier, Poulin, Sanson, and Morad are the guys that sit in spots six, seven, and eight. Mag is done with his second set of sandbag cleans, and now he is on to the barbell for his second of three sets of two squat snatches. Medeiros, Hopper, and Morad all there as well. Hopper is the first man to get a rep in in the red shirt. Magda's first rep is no good. Medeiros has his first rep down. Morad and Pfaff also. Now, Will Morad is through two along with Jason Hopper. They are your new leaders. Magda will get that rep to go, and he has one left, but he has now fallen back into fourth place in this heat. Now, fifth place is Jacob Pfaff is done. You see Magda taking a knee between each rep. Maybe just trying to get control of his heart rate here. 
Magda's through his second round. One round remains. Meanwhile, Matt Poulin is still on his second set of sandbag cleans. And that's a good sign for Magda. If I'm him, you know, after missing that snatch, I'm looking left and right, trying to make sure I know where the guy that's chasing me is. Now, Poulin's got to make up 32 points on Tudor Magda. It is possible, but right now it doesn't look like it's going to happen because Tudor Magda is staying way ahead of Matt Poulin. And Poulin manages to get that rep to go. Oh, man. Too far forward on that one and not able to control it. But Will Morat is off the wall first. Back to the sandbag. James Sprague, meanwhile, has got to be a little careful here. Sprague is just getting back to the barbell now for the second time as Magda is on his final set of muscle-ups. Sprague on the right side of your screen, third place overall. Thankfully, he's got a 53-point cushion, and the guy that's trying to make it up, Matt Poulin, is towards the back half of this heat. So, you know, every athlete that's ahead of Poulin Now, Poulin has been okay on the front part of this event. It's the sandbag and the barbell that are giving him some problems. Well, Justin Medeiros is done with his third round of sandbag cleans. Time to beat belongs to Evan Rogers, 623.29 seconds. Medeiros to the final barbell. Will Morad is done, and Morad is going to win the event. He was in eighth place coming in. So he should at least be alive for spot in the last chance online qualifier. Medeiros is done, and he will get to defend his title in Madison. And he went tap and go on those last two just to try and get into that six-minute mark, give the crowd a little something, something to remember him by. Cole Gray Shaver is done with his first of two reps. Jason Hoppers, and then Griffin Raleigh is across. And that's big for Raleigh because he's about 16 points back of Rafael Sansen if he's trying to move up into the last chance qualifier spot. So Raleigh's going to take fourth in the event. That's going to earn him 88 points. Tudor Magda and Matt Poulin are still on the floor. And Magda's stepping up for his final two reps. Doing what he needs to do and staying ahead of Matt Poulin. And Tudor Magda is in. And there's a good chance we'll be seeing that young man in Madison. Matt Poulin has one rep to go and not able to lock it out. You can see James Sprague, who's also on the wall. He took a break there. He moved to the left of his handstand push-up wall to eye down Matt Poole and see where he is. That's James Sprague's father, who has competed at the CrossFit Games as a master. Sprague to the sandbag for the final time. Just looking to stay inside for the top five. Two minutes to go, and Matt Poulin is now ahead of James Sprague. And James Sprague just got a no rep. He didn't control it at the top. It hit his shoulder. He immediately dropped it down, got the no rep for lack of control. But Sprague is certainly making this interesting right now. Well, he has a minute 40 to get his two reps in as Matt Poulin hits his first rep on his final set of 205, and he's going to go right back to work. And we'll be able to make that. 90 seconds to go. Here comes James Sprague. Tudor Magda out there to cheer him on. Sprague hits rep number one. And Poulin is across. And I don't think there's going to be enough points on the table for Poulin 
to make it up given where he finished. McCoolin finished 22nd in the event. Sprague is across. He's going to take 24. It's only a difference of six points. Now Griffin Raleigh, though, was able to pick up 62 points on Sprague, but that is not going to be enough. Although Raleigh, that man Will Morad, and Matt Poulin are hoping that they did enough to keep their seasons alive and move on to the last chance online qualifier. And with that, the 2022 Syndicate Crown is in the books. Griffin Raleigh with a great charge late. Looking to give himself one more chance to get to the games. No. Will Morad just won that event. It's possible 80 points back of Sprague that he may have catapulted himself depending on how many points Sprague gets for that finish. Well, Sprague finished 24th. And that will earn him 19 points. So he gives up 81 to Morad. So we will have to see if James Sprague may have dropped out of the top five. If that's the case, I think that would be the biggest point comeback ever in a qualifying round. Sprague was only 80 points up on Morad. And early on, Tudor Magda trying to fight off Matt Poulin, Rafael Sansa, and a few of the athletes on the bubble. And he was out front early alongside Madero's Hopper, but he had a couple no reps and had to dial it back just a little bit. The question was, would Matt Poulin be able to give him a push James Sprague, another athlete in third, looked like he was comfortable in a qualifying spot, but way over in lane number 10, the veteran, Will Morad, wasn't the first out of round one, but made a huge push in rounds two and three, gets the event win as far as, you know, controlling what you can, putting 100 points up on the board is best case scenario. James Sprague, 24th in that event for 19 points unofficially. Will Morad did win. He picks up 100. That's 81. And Morad needed to make up 80. So Sprague, we'll have to wait to see how it shakes out, may find himself in sixth place overall. But he will still be alive and have a shot at the last chance online qualifier. And I think everybody's doing some math right now to try to figure this thing out. You know that man's going to sit atop the podium. Justin Medeiros. <laughs> <laughs> Who, despite being such a fantastic athlete, is also just an incredibly nice person. Mm -hmm. He and his family just a joy to be around. Matt Poulin hoping that he stays alive in this season and at least is in the top eight. And either way, coming into, into this particular event in sixth, you know, after showing up in the open, the question is, we see that every year, guys kind of announce their arrival in the open. Do they have what it takes to, you know, compete at the highest level? And I think we saw enough from Matt Poulin to know that, you know, this won't be the last time we hear from him. So Rafael Sansen came into this event in seventh. Really a surprise story. Let's send it down to Noah Dean for the official announcement. They're still working on it. Want to get this one right, as everybody right now is look like they're putting the pulling the calculators out and trying to figure this 
these final standings out. Once again, coming in, Will Morad had 303 points. James Sprague had 383. All right, athletes, please get to your Let's finish mats. Noah Dean has the final results and will make the official announcement. All right, guys, let's talk about our top five men headed to Madison, Wisconsin. I'm going to need you fellas on your starting mat or ending mats. What's going on here? Athletes, to your finish mats. Thank you very much. Thank you. What do y'all think about the syndicate crown? Pretty good show? Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. This man put on quite the show. He finished with 540 points. He's proven himself many times, but here he does it again. Justin Medeiros. It's the flow, Justin. We all know it. It's the flow, dude. Come on. In second place, with 468 points, Jason Hopper. <laughs> Rounding out the podium, sitting third with 457 points, Cole Greasehaver. In fourth place, with 418 points, Mr. Tudor Magda. Congratulations, Tudor. Honestly, gentlemen, you all did a great job. Oh, hey, celebrity, is that Kyra Milligan and Danielle Brandon? Oh, hey. Hey, ladies, they don't know where to look because they don't know where I am. That's okay. Good to see you, ladies. What'd y'all think of the, uh, the event? Pretty good, right? Very good. Well, let's talk about who got fifth and has punched his ticket to the Noble CrossFit Games. You've seen him before with 403 points, Mr. Will Morad. Guys, give us a few minutes and we will have our podium ceremony. Will Morad, what a comeback. And it is, this is one of those cases where you want both of these guys to make it. Yep. Will Morad, after everything he has been through with his family and his wife's breast cancer, and James Sprague, just because he is such a fantastic young man and the heartbreak that he must be experiencing right now. We'll wait for the final standings, but I think it was a matter of just one point. Yeah, it... It looks like Will made up 81 points off of an 80-point deficit. And, you know, we talked to Will beforehand, and just the last year has just been an up-and-down ride. You know, his, unfortunately, his wife, Cass, found out at the games last year that she could potentially be dealing with breast cancer. It was confirmed, and she's been battling it. The, the prognosis has been great, but, you know, it just wears on you. And, no one would have blamed Will if he dialed it back this year. You know, took 22, 22 off. Holy shit. <laughs> but he told us, you know, his wife was adamant he sticks with it. And her strength in the process really kind of emboldened him. And, man, what a comeback for him. And, it, you know, it sucks that it has to come at the expense of someone else. But no doubt this isn't the last we've seen of James Sprague either. Will Morad with his only event win in the competition. Here are your final standings. It was one point. One point between Will Morad and James Sprague. Sprague, Raleigh, and Faf will be going to the last chance online qualifier as Matt Poulin drops tonight.
Let's go down to Nikki Brazer, who is with your 2022 Syndicate Crown Champion and defending fittest man on earth, Justin Medeiros. Justin, it was just about this time last year at the MAC that you really burst onto the scene and what a season you had from now until then. How do you think you progressed as an athlete that got you to the top of the podium here? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I feel like I'm a whole different athlete, but at the same time, like everything's the same. I mean, I got, got a great team around me, great family. So like the day to day, like has never really changed. But uh, I mean, every time I walk in the gym, I'm trying to be fitter than I was and uh, going into this year, my goal is to be fitter than I was last year. And I feel like I'm checking that box. Absolutely. There's a field full of fit guys here, and I know that you push each other often. When you're out there on the competition floor, how much do you look left and right and adjust your plan based on what's happening? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, we definitely go into each event with a game plan. you got to execute that to the best of your ability, but every time an event, there's a, there's a game-winning opportunity that might be right in the beginning, in the middle, or at the end, and it's uh, the athlete's job to kind of recognize that moment and take advantage of it. So just kind of being aware of your surroundings and uh, making sure you don't get beat at the finish line, which uh, kind of happened to me once. So Just once, just once. Between now and games, what do you do? Do you get a break? Do you, do you go straight back to training? What happens? No, definitely. I'm going to take a little bit of time off like uh, this next week, kind of enjoy, let the body rest up. But uh, man, dude, game training is the best time of the season, so I can't wait for it. Congrats. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. It, is now, it has now been a year since Justin Medeiros lost an in-person competition and Jason Hopper was one of the men that beat him in Knoxville last year at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge. Hopper going back to the games for the second time, and we talked about him earlier this weekend. He got kind of surprised at the CrossFit Games. There were a lot of expectations on him, given how he performed at the semifinals last year. He will be much better prepared in 2022. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, having some adversity here at the semifinals as well and still finding a way to rally, you know, at times it felt like maybe he missed a lift here or there or, you know, mispaced a workout. But you know what? Hopper still ends up solidly in second, just behind the reigning fittest man on earth. And he's probably not going to get surprised this year now that he knows what to expect once he gets on the games floor. James Sprague still smiling despite missing out on a game spot by one point. The man that took it from him. Will Morad wins event number six, his only event win of the weekend, and he is with Nikki Brazier. It is, it is an emotional moment here for you. I know that that kind of came as a shock, and man, you've had a year. You've had a really tough time. I know that your wife has been dealing with cancer diagnosis, and it could have been your year to kind of step back, but you didn't. You stepped out onto the competition floor, and here you are punching your ticket to the games. What is going through your mind right now? I'm at, I'm at a loss for words, man. Uh, thanks, everybody, for the support. Thanks my wife and my team. You're amazing. Um, kind of in shock, but definitely stoked to be going back to Madison and uh, to compete to be the fittest on earth. When the, when the shock wears off and you accept that this is your next step, what happens? What does your training look like from here uh, on out? Yeah, we got to keep training. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take a little time off. Yeah. Uh, watch my training partners compete the next few weeks and then whenever they get uh, back after it and T gets back in town later this week we'll kind of join together and start the push to Madison. I think this is really a story of grit. You really came up from behind in the point spread and, and I think shocked yourself in that last event. This is kind of setting, setting the tone. I mean what are you showing other athletes and other people that they're capable of here? Yeah just I mean it's as cliche as it sounds never give up. Um, be as resilient as possible and uh, see what happens. And that's exactly what I did. And it, it turned out the way we wanted it to. So yeah, I'm in shock a little bit, but I'm glad all the training I did all year paid off because it's easy to start <laughs> doubting yourself when you're in 10th place or whatever I was going into that last event. So yeah, uh, a little bit of relief there. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Will Morad, as Nikki said, had every reason to sort of dial it back, just like you said as well, Tommy. But he comes up with his best performance in the final event, and he is heading back to the CrossFit Games. And we thought we were going into that final heat of men sort of drama-free, and that is not what we got. No, and he moves up from eighth to fifth. An 80-point gap made up in the final event. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. And for someone in Will Moore that, you know, has overcome so much in his personal life with his wife as well, you know, congrats to Will.
And for James Gray, he's disappointed, but he will live to fight another day. Five teams, five women, and five men heading to Madison, Wisconsin on the 2022 No Bull CrossFit Games. It was an exciting Sunday here in Knoxville, Tennessee on the final day of the Syndicate Crown. For Tommy Marquez, Nikki Brazer, the entire hardworking broadcast team here at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. We'll see you in Madison.
All right. Two minutes, two minutes before we kick off our podium ceremony. I hope you guys had a great time. I know I had a good time. Again, we're going to do the teams, the women and then the men. I know that all of you, especially Rich Froning Jr., is going to be kind enough to put on the shirts that we give you before you get on the podium. Right, Rich? No, I like the Pistons too much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get started. First off, I want to congratulate all of you, our top five teams, men and women. We're going to start off with our teams. And what's really cool about this is that this gym has set themselves up to potentially be the first gym in history to send three teams to the CrossFit Games. In fifth place for our teams, CrossFit Mayhem Justice. No, you you, you stand up. You, yeah, here you go. So come over here. <laughs> get your shirts and get on the podium. <laughs> oh, man. In fourth place. Eighth day CrossFit Black. Let's go, guys. I like the matching shirts. You're going to match again on the podium there. In third place, CrossFit Overtake Team Density. Everybody's matching, looking good. Just got that coordination. In second place, also a phenomenal fan base here at the Syndicate Crown. CrossFit CLT. And on top of the podium, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. Has any team ever swept every event at a semis? Has ever, any team ever swept every event? It's a time zone different, Rich. You guys got it. Congratulations. So CrossFit has provided level one courses as prizes for our winners. Using the CrossFit methodology, the level one teaches the foundational movements and nutritional strategies required to coach others and or to become a fitter and healthier athlete. Congratulations to all our competitors. One more round of applause for all of them. And I would like to congratulate Rich for actually putting the shirt on. Thank you. We good, media? All right, get out of there, teams. Congratulations. We will see you in Madison. <laughs> Moving on to our ladies. Mm. Okay, men. Men, got it. In fifth place for our fellows, Will Morad. In 
in fourth place, Tudor Magda. In third, Cole Greasehaber. In second place, Mr. Jason Hopper. And real quick, before we announce our winner for the men, you already know him. Justin Medeiros and I spoke. We have a lot of signatures on that hat. Justin, show everybody that hat. We have athletes, volunteers, spectators. So many people have signed that hat. We even have Paige Simmons' mom's autograph on that hat. And the fittest man on earth and your syndicate crown champion is going to give that to a random volunteer. Who wants that hat, ladies and gentlemen? There you go. Hype it up. There's value not only in that hat, but in the person giving it away. There you go. <laughs> Justin Medeiros, jump on that podium, brother. As I spoke about earlier, CrossFit has provided level one courses as prizes for our winners. Using the CrossFit methodology, the level one teaches the foundational movements and nutritional strategies required to coach others and or to become a fitter and healthier athlete. Congratulations to all of our competitors. One more round of applause for our fellas here. Look at that media team. Click, 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 click. You look good, guys. Somebody get a picture of the media team doing that. Justin's just looking around. I don't know what to do. Yeah, fellas, you can jump off that podium. Good job, man. All right, moving on to our ladies. In fifth place, Christine Colin Brander. Come on, Christine. In fourth place, Christy Aramo O'Connell. In third place, Paige Semenza. In second place, Alexis Raptis. And winning the women's division here at the Syndicate Crown, Haley Adams. And yes, I'm going to read this to you one more time. CrossFit has provided level one courses as prizes for our winners using the CrossFit methodology. The level one teaches the foundational movements and nutritional strategies required to coach others and or to become a fitter and healthier athlete. Congratulations to all of our competitors. One more round of applause for our ladies. Very well done. Thank you all for being a part of the Syndicate Crown. We'll see you in Madison. Or this coming weekend here in Knoxville. <laughs>